to approve the swearing in we can't we do that actually so yes um if if that was the situation we could move forward with swearing in and and then we would have a quorum um <laughs> but now we have one so we don't have to go down that particular path <laughs> yes none of us will appear before the supreme court for that issue <laughs> tonight an important yeah. one <laughs> So we are uh, we are live, and uh, if anybody'd like to get started, we can. Oh, there's Colin. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Truth Commission meeting for December. Um, let's uh, start with a uh, roll call. Jim Kramer. Here. Uh, and Daniel here. Larry Gunther present. Alan Lowry present also. John Ruder here. And Colin Walsh here. Okay. All right. Oh. So today, uh, if I may jump in, Colin, please do. Thank you. Uh, today we do have a swearing in of our new commissioner, Ann Daniel. She is here with us. On the next slide, Ann, we have the um, the oath that you will be taking to join us on this commission. Um, if you could raise your right hand and repeat uh, what is on there, including your name. All right. I, Ann Daniel, solemnly affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. You're welcome. Okay, so uh, next we have uh, the, I guess, next we have the approval of the agenda. Larry Gunther moves Larry? to approve the agenda. Ellen seconds. Great. Uh, from the top, Jim Kramer. Hi. Uh, Ann Daniel. Aye. Larry Gunther. Aye. Alan Lowry. Aye. John Ruder? Aye. And Colin Walsh? Aye. Great. Um, do we have any uh, brief announcements from uh, the commissioners, liaisons, and staff? Um, Larry? Um, yeah, I wanted to uh, make an announcement just um, if we can. Hey, there it is. Awesome. Hey. Thank you, staff. So this uh, is unfortunately a silver maple that was dying in uh, our front yard that we had taken down. It is, uh, I had it milled um, and uh, we're going to build a pergola out of it. That middle slab is six inches thick and the rest are four inches thick where they are. Uh, and then um, on the next slide in the remove and replace, this is a seedling of a Texas red oak um, that was uh, pl planted from an acorn of Greg McPherson's tree. Catherine Woodruff, who is, works for the city, and Tree Davis um, planted a bunch of seedlings, so I got it from her. Um, tree Davis and the city of Davis don't like to plant seedlings because they are really susceptible to getting hammered by mowers, people, critters, what have you. Um, but in our front yard where we're pretty protected, um, we went ahead and planted that. Also, they're hard to get. That's it, thank you. Awesome. Uh, any other uh, brief announcements? Jacob? 
Hey, good evening, everyone. I uh, just wanted to note that the uh, Climate Action Plan went before the City Council um, uh, last week, I think it was. Um, had some great uh, input from the public. Um, some some members of this commission came on, on their own and commented as well. Um, so just happy to report that that process is moving ahead. Um, and it was very timely since um, Charlie was there as well presenting and uh, you know, these plans are so intimately connected. So yeah, thanks for your time and hoping uh, we can see some of you when it goes back to the council um, in uh, early uh, next year. Thank you. Thanks, Jacob. Cheryl? Welcome. Oh, you're on mute. Thank you so much. Caught me. Um, I just wanted to mention that the um, downtown Davis specific plan was approved by the city council on Tuesday night. Thanks, Cheryl. Um, and uh, I don't want to put you too much on the spot, um, but uh, the this would be a good uh opportunity if you wanted to say a couple things about yourself uh, for all of us. I'm sorry I didn't have a chance to connect with you sooner and make and introduce you. <laughs> would you like to introduce yourself? This would be an appropriate time to do it. That's fine. I'd be happy to do that. No, I really appreciate this opportunity. I've been an active volunteer in Davis and Yolo County as a UC Master Gardener. So my real interest has always been public education and making sure people know how to be good stewards of our environment. I'm currently a garden volunteer in Davis at Central Park Gardens in the meadow, uh, the UC Davis Arboretum, and recently started working as a volunteer at the Memorial Tree Grove. So really you know, glad to be part of that. I'm also an active board member of Pacific Horticulture, and I'm a former board member of the Davis Farmers Market. So, you know, I really feel that I, you know, have, a lot to contribute as a you know sort of normal citizen concerned about our environment and making sure that people have a real understanding of what the critical issues are and what their role can be in it. That I think people are frustrated and they are concerned about climate change and the issues, but they want to know what they can do. And I think we have a, a role to play in that. So I'm very interested in uh, native California native plants, pollinators, particularly our native bees. And I think my real interest is really you know, looking forward to ways to contribute to public education and helping people understand what we do as a tree commission and particularly moving forward with all this information about the new trees and tree care. I think there's an important role to play and I would be really happy to participate in that. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. That's great. Well, th I, that's a wonderful uh, resume of experience. I'm so glad you're here. Well, thank you. I'm excited about the opportunity. I have lots to learn and I look forward to what's ahead. Well, we have, we probably all have lots to learn from you too, so. <laughs> well, thank you. Be, yeah, it'll be good. Uh, any other um, announcements? Okay, uh, not seeing any. Well, we can uh, move on. So this is a, a period for general public comment. Uh, if you have a comment about something that's um, on the agenda later and you're able to be there for that item, it would be better to hold your comment till that time, but we can take general public comment now. We have one public commenter, Alan Hirsch. You can go ahead and unmute yourself and share your comment. Hi, this is Alan Hirsch. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, expanding on the down is is, is um Charlie here? Yes. yes, I'm here. Good. Okay, I I can't see who's here. Yeah, it kind of is good faith. I should be in this. The public should be in the same meeting oh. as the uh, as the meetings, and we should be able to see gallery view, so we can see everyone in the meeting. I assume you guys can see gallery view, but the public can't. So I would appreciate that. Um, so we all can see one another because our nonverbals that pass and enter into people's expression. Um, second, at the, at the Tuesday board, uh, city council meeting, the downtown tree plan was approved. The downtown plan was approved, but most important, they modified that 
and they included a, a, an implementation detail was to be a downtown tree plant. And there were, it was call out and it was specific discussion about that thing. And I presented slides that had the six reasons I've shared with you, the six reasons we need a downtown tree plant. And there was money for that plan <clears throat> in the uh, American recovery plan money. The city council has already set aside for downtown. So we can have that's funded, it's ready to go. And it should be a first priority after you finish the urban forest management plan. Um, and I would suggest that uh, I'm, I'm glad to report on this. I don't miss all the meetings, but it's the responsibility of staff liaison to report what happens at city council to the tree commission. So the city tree commission stays in sync with the city council's policy and priority. In the past, uh, our former tree arborists did not, and there was a wall between city policymakers and the tree commission. I think we need to break that wall down. The first step is have city our staff liaison report what happens in terms of city policy to the city that affects trees to the, to the tree commission. So I hope hope you have to, I hope that's helpful comment for the people who it's, it's intended to. Second, I'm not gonna stay for the urban forest management plan, but I'm concerned that basically it's built. I saw the resource plan that was issued to the council. It is deeply flawed because we do not have a correct inventory. We don't know how many trees are managed by the city, how many trees are protected by the city on private property, the parking lot trees and whatnot. And we don't know how many trees that are on street trees that are, that are privately managed and basically may take up spaces that we can plan and manage the city trees by. And if we don't know which trees are private and public on the street, we don't know what, what trees we're supposed to be caring for. So how can we have a plan to prune them and budget for them? I'm also concerned that we haven't in the plan, we, we aren't focusing on the specifics of where trees should and should not be. For city, we should be focusing on where trees, because water is short. Focus on trees or on bike paths, bus stops and equity and not put them in middle of the fields where no people are. We should put trees where they're really strategically needed because we need to use our water strategically. And also you guys suggested that the urban forest management plan should have addressed fire danger of trees. And I don't see that in the scope here. I'm also concerned that basically the urban forest management plan, the resource plan has six digits of accuracy. We had one digit of measurement. So there's false accuracy. That's scientifically bogus. You cannot have six digits of accuracy on the numbers when you only measure things to one digit of accuracy. So please fix the scientific basis of that report. I hope that's helpful. Thank you very much. We're moving ahead, making great progress. Thank you, Charlie, for being on board. Thank you, Alan. And we have no additional public commenters at this time. Thank you. Okay, uh, so next up we have the uh, consent calendar. Uh, are, is, there, uh, is there anything that needs to be pulled or do we have a motion? Larry Gunther moves okay. to approve the consent calendar. Jim Sackinson. <laughs> Great. Uh, from the top, uh, Jim Kramer. Aye. Ann Daniel? Aye. Larry Gunther? Aye. Alan Lowry? Aye. John Ruder? Aye. And Colin Walsh? Aye. Great. Uh, Charlie, would you like to take it away with the Urban Forest Management Plan? Certainly. Um, hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, so we have two, we actually have two items tied to the urban forestry management plan. So thank you all for being here, uh, liaisons included. Uh, the first part is going to be the discussion uh, or the hopefully the finalization of um, the, the Tree Commission's review of the 2002 Community Forestry management plan goals and vision. Um, we really believe that the plan that was produced in 2002 actually had some really good uh, long-term sites and visions. Um, so we just wanna make sure that they still make sense. Um, again, we've had these conversations over the last two or three months and Colin and uh, Larry in the subcommittee for the urban forest management plan produced a wonderful update um, of those plans that were was sent out to folks um, as part of the packet and agenda last week. So hopefully you had a chance to review those. Um, I will, just because we are talking twice about the urban forest management plan, um, just wanted to give 
um, some reiteration of understanding exactly what it is within the framework of what we're trying to do here uh, at the city of Davis. So I think next slide has our framework slide. Yes, perfect. So I think, and I, and I will apologize that I didn't use this slide every time we started talking management plan, because I think it is very, very useful um, for everyone to kind of put their eyes on it before we start having discussions, um, just because there's so many different pieces of what urban forestry is trying to do uh, in the city of Davis. And um, just because they do come up in the conversation of the management plan, it is not necessarily the role of the management plan to undertake the creation of or the updating of that specific piece. Um, so again, if you just kind of look at this graphic that Adrian put together quite a while ago, but it is, again, one of my favorite things that I've seen since I've been here. Um, the urban forestry ma forest management plan is the top of that umbrella, right? So everything that we're going to be working on and are currently working on kind of fall under that, but aren't necessarily embedded within it. So um, I'm sure we're going to talk about quite a bit about um, the the tree ordinance, um, anything tied to enforcement capacities, those types of things will be mentioned, referenced, frameworked out potentially in the management plan, but not the actual updating of the ordinance. That's going to be a completely separate piece that has been worked on for several years. And as the management plan starts to wrap up, we're going to be picking up back. I think actually we bring it to the commission uh, to start this conversation in January. So just, just realizing things like that. Um, any other potential updates or ordinances that may come out of this, um, again, are not going to be in the management plan. They'll be potentially instructed through the management plan. Uh, this also includes things like tree preservation and protection standards, which I think is going to be a huge component of um, something that we'll be updating and utilizing uh, everyone here on the commission to get feedback and understanding of what should and should not be kind of in those things. Um, parking lot shade guidelines. That is something that I'm sure will be picked up again soon. We obviously had an update to state code, um, which has kind of had a bunch of folks figuring out on the legal side of things here in Davis. Um, the master tree list, which I've mentioned a couple of times, we have a subcommittee of um, folks from the uh, UC Davis Arboretum, um, a couple of local business owners, uh, folks from Tree Davis, uh, coming together to, to work out a, a new updated uh, tree master list, which again, we're pulling out of that ordinance. It's a separate component that'll be coming to the commission for approval and, and, and feedback and things like that as the process continues. Um, and then much like the preservation standards, uh, planting and maintenance specs and getting those things updated. Um, and again, coming to commission for you guys approval. And then um, obviously, really honing in exactly um, the role of your commission, uh, what what really should be happening and, and the best utilization of everybody's time um, and skill sets and, and, and making sure that we, we get what we want out of everything tied to or affecting uh, the canopy of Davis. So I uh, just, again, want to make sure that everyone's kind of looking at that. So when all these things kind of come up, and they will come up because again, it's the top of that umbrella is the, the management plan. Um, it is not necessarily that those things are gonna be completely detailed out within that management plan. Um, but again, so this section uh, of our conversation is, is back to um, what the subcommittee for the urban forestry management plan uh, put together. Um, so I will turn it back to Colin. And I don't know, Colin, if you want us to pull up um, which you produce to share um, or how you would like to go about that? Sure, uh, I guess I'd like to get a sense uh, from the commission and uh, liaisons um, have, has, so we, we looked at this uh, extensively two meetings ago and we had really good conversation and feedback about it, which uh, I, we were, ha have attempted to incorporate into the, uh, this, the document that went out with the packet. So I guess I wanna get a sense of where people are with this overall. Um, is this something that I'm hoping this isn't, that we don't, that, that we're close and that there may be high level things that we can look at at this time. 
uh, but I want to get a sense of how of, of uh, where people are with it uh, before we dive right into it. Uh, Jim and then John. Yeah, I have a, uh, a clarifying question and then a uh, reply to your, your question. Um, my clarifying question is really whether this is uh, updating or replacing the 2002 uh, management plan. And I ask that because the vision statement is word for word the same as the 2002 document, which would be consistent with sort of an updating, whereas the list of goals and policies seems to be entirely different format and content uh, and, and seems to be replacing uh, the thing. And uh, in terms of the vision statement, the, uh, uh, it, it, it's, it takes from the 2002 plan and uses the term community uh, forest management plan where community is basically defined as public trees. And so I'm curious about that. Uh, it seems to me that that should be replaced with urban forest management plan. Okay, uh, so in the spirit of answering the question, um, actually, I, I guess I missed that use of the word community. I tried to update everywhere throughout this uh, the, the, to urban forest. Uh, so I guess I would, I think that we probably need to, to do that. Yeah, in the uh, 2002 plan, it, it very clearly defines community as uh, the city, the, the public trees. Yeah, uh, and then it's, in terms of where how it relates to the previous uh vision and goals um i i think it's more of an update um the the last sentence of the vision is completely new um and then in terms of the goals the goals from the uh, 2002 were the starting point and then they've been revised primarily to uh, add in climate change as a concern. I think okay, thank you also with enforcement, but is that helpful? Yeah, that's that's fine. I mean, I'll have other comments later, but that's fine. Thank you. Great. Um, so uh, John, Marcus, Cheryl, and Larry. Okay, th <clears throat> thanks, Colin. Um, I'm just trying to put this into a, a bigger perspective, um, as, as Charlie was was discussing. Um, it seems that a number of policies under each goal won't really uh, be discussed um, in the in the urban forest management plan. Um, so I'm wondering in the the title. It says uh, after the colon and setting priorities for the urban forest management plan. Um, it seems that that 2003 urban forest management plan phrase probably should be bigger because all these policies and goals will not be part of that. They'll be they'll be part of other things as expressed in this uh, this framework, right? So I think it's giving sort of a a false impression. Um, uh that um these policies will be included in the urban forest management plan when they won't be and i'm not saying that's a bad thing it's just it's just nice to know what will be in there the other thing which goes along with that is in these goals and the, the policies it would be nice in a column or uh, next to next to each of the policies where where these will be lo located so in other words, if you can't, and I'm just pretending here, if you can't do policy 1.1 within the urban forest management plan, where, where can we expect to find that? Or where do we envision uh, that that, 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 that will, will live? So I think those two things are, are related. And those are just a, a couple of comments in the, the title and the, the vision. Thanks. Thanks. Um, did, uh, that was more of a, that, that, there wasn't a question, right? That was more of a comment just to. Well, a lot clarifying quick, quick question comment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Marcus. Uh, you're on mute. My apologies. I have a comment primarily about the parking lot 
shade guidelines and when they're developed. Uh, the issue I'd like to make aware to anyone who's involved in writing those guidelines is that because um, there's movement for solar power, which is good, they tend to put it over the parking spaces of cars, thereby reducing the amount of area for trees. And I think um, we need regulations to require the trees between the rows of parked cars and have the solar panel structure put over the actual driveway area instead of the parked cars. Um, we need trees as well as power, and the trees will give the shade to the cars. And in the early day and the late day, the, the structure over the driveway will also give shade to the cars. So that's not really an issue. I've, I've spoken to some people about it. They're concerned about their cars not being shaded anymore. But it's, it's, it'd be terrible to see all of the trees and parking lots disappear for solar panels when they don't have to. So I'd like just to make anyone aware of that as those guidelines are being prepared. Thanks, Marcus. Uh, I guess as a matter of background, we have a, a subcommittee that is working on that policy specifically to um, that uh, and ultimately it's, I guess it's actually in two places in the city code, but uh, it's, I guess it isn't, it won't entirely be resolved in the management plan probably. That's good, good input. Um, Cheryl, Larry, then Elaine, or did you, are you done, Marcus? Did you, okay. Yes, thank you. Oh, Cheryl, I, there you go. Yes. go ahead. Uh, so, so I've been really struggling with how to be most helpful um, for this effort on behalf of the planning commission. Uh, back in September, uh, I submitted a list of, uh, issues that the planning commission has struggled with uh, during my tenure there. And um, I was told that there wasn't really time to talk about it until December and now it's December. And I'm really wondering how, um, how this is gonna roll out. I can see that, uh, you know, I did a, a little analysis of the, um, both these uh, policies, the goals and the policies that are on item 7A and also on 7B that has uh, information about what, what are the concerns. And um, so I just wanted to have a chance to really focus on what are the concerns that the Planning Commission has had during this time and how that interacts with these documents that are being prepared and and um, as background to the urban forest management plan. So I'd sure appreciate some more clarity on how best to do that. And I'm I'm prepared tonight to uh, you know share my screen and go over those uh, eight or nine issues uh, if uh, that will inform the documents that are uh, part of this meeting. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Cheryl. Um, the, I think that the, you know, I think that what you've brought from the planning commission is really important, uh, just from my perspective. So, uh, just to end as it, to take this as the clarifying part, like where it might fit in, um, as we talk about the goals, uh, and the vision statement tonight, um, you know, input that related to that. And then the, um, uh, I, I think a lot of what you had uh, in there probably relates to what the what we're getting back from the consultants tonight. And so your input there um, with the consultants, I think would be really helpful too. Um, and perhaps at that point would be a good time to share if you if sharing the screen seems appropriate then. Um, does that sound reasonable to you? So what's coming back from the consultant is already included in the packet? Yes. Yes. Okay. So some of what I have relates to that information. Some of it relates to this uh, 7A, item 7A, that um, illustrates these um, uh, policies and uh, goals from the 2002 Community Forestry Management Plan. 
Right. So as it, if you could, if you're able to divide between the two as we go go through these, that would be that would be helpful. If... Yeah, that might be kind of tricky because you know I'm coming from a uh, from a specific. This has been the planning commission's challenge, and um, and then trying to figure out how this fits into all these different documents that you have. So I really need more guidance in how to actually make that happen. Okay. Um, well, I think that I, I suspect we're all gonna have, uh, be looking for a lot of uh, how to um, work with what's come back from the consultants in particular uh, and how best to go over it. It is a lot of material. Uh, so the, I guess if there are parts of it that we can, that relate to the goals, I'd love to hear uh, about them, you know, in this section and, you know, you have lots of, you have all of the space that you need, I think here to, to do that. Um, well, I'd be glad to start um, and see if uh, see if this is going to work for y'all. Is that all right? Yeah. Is there just feeling out the commission? Is there any objection to that? No. So, I guess I'm wondering mm -hmm. where where are we in this process? Is this clarifying questions discussion? What we're we yeah we're I guess I had asked a question to get us try to get a sense of where people were with the documents, and what I'm hearing is that. There's a uh, that there are some bigger questions about the goals is what I'm hearing. Um, so is that a discussion issue or is that I, I just don't know where we right. are how we're proceeding? I guess. Yeah, I follow. So um, so I guess I was trying to get a sense of of uh, the level of input that we were going to be getting, and it sounds like we're going that we're going to that there's going to be a, a fair amount of input. Um, so I guess what I'd like to do is if there are, you know, other clarifying questions, which Cheryl's question is an excellent clarifying question for how we're proceeding. Um, and then we could take public comment and then we could do, uh, go into discussion. And uh, if Cheryl would like to, to start with what she's bringing from the planning commission, that would be a reasonable way to do that. So that sounds um, great. Thank you. Okay. Good. So are there clarifying questions beyond that? Yeah, that's what I was. Great. So Larry. Okay. So um, one is, is a, it's pedantic, but then it's a legal document. So pedantics count. Um, the city arborist is what is used in the document so far. And I don't know, this is a question for staff. Do we have a city arborist? I thought we had an urban forest manager. Um, and so maybe that should be changed. Um, I did have some response. So Marcus, I'm now, I've been promoted as a voting member of the two by two subcommittee on parking lot ordinance, the parking lot part of the tree ordinance. And um, although we haven't had a meeting, I'm, I'm hoping that those aren't related. Um, but that is a huge issue that what you brought up and we're talking about that. And when we get that those meetings started again, um, we would value that impact. On, on Cheryl's topic, this, this is actually a big clarifying question, I guess, almost to goals and aspirations. But enumerating a process uh, for requests of tree modification or removal on trees that are required in a development agreement. Um, that is that's come up several times over the last couple of years um and staff told the planning the planning commission asked for input from the tree commission and um staff members had said that that the tree commission had no place making comments on that which is a little distressing but so clarifying if a tree is required for a development is that a city tree or is it a private tree? And is there any consequence once that tree is planted and the development is approved? Is there any consequence at all for removing 
those trees and and should the tree commission have input on that um that seems like something that fits in the tr in the urban forest management plan um the other well no everything else is a comment that's it thank you thank you uh elaine yeah <clears throat> i like the framework of having the urban urban forest management plan up at the top for the general planning and then you know subdividing it and so forth and that's fine but i guess my question is when are these different things going to be done um obviously we're working on the urban forest management plan and that's going to be done soon but what about these you know overhauling the the ordinance for planting trees and preservation and protection um the parking lot guidelines and so forth what's the time frame so uh charlie you may want to respond the uh, we are going to be kicking off the um ordinance uh is it at our next meeting charlie yeah mm -hmm. so we are so the tree ordinance has been worked on from before my time uh here and was kind of put on hold um with the realization that the framework that's on the screen right now um was going to kind of potentially lead us in certain directions where we would want to see what happens before we updated the ordinance so it has been worked on um we have a consultant working on it um and then when we put it on hold that is what will be presented what the last update from that hold will be updated in january for more guidance more understanding clarity based off of the talks and conversations we had surrounding the management plan um, and then from there we would continually work on that um, as we're finishing up the management plan so as the management plan finishes we would be full steam ahead with that ordinance update um, as for the other things as i mentioned um we, we have a subcommittee working uh, on this, the, the master tree list, um, specs and standards and, and things like that are, are things that staff will be working on um, as the management plan wraps up and, and coming to the commission for approval and, and feedback and things like that. Um, so some are already being worked on and some will be picked up shortly after the management plan is finished um, just because we're unfortunately short staffed right now and can only only so many hours in the workday um, but the, it, all, all this stuff should be um, having or being touched within the early I would say early to mid part of uh, 2023. Okay that sounds good. Well um, I want to add the uh, idea that other related ordinances as applicable there's things in the the in what we currently have like in the in the goals about shading uh, uh, bus stops and bike paths, for example, that that's not necessarily in chapter 37 that, you know, but may belong in other places in city code. So, um, you, you know, I think there's things yet to be identified that we don't know. Um, there, there's ideas in the urban forest management plan that the implementation may fall into that box and i'm not sure when those will happen i i'm kind of assuming that all of these documents are living documents that can change over time so i get that it's just i think my main concern is for instance the tree ordinance has been you know worked on for years and I know the cap is the same sort of thing where it's just gone on and on and on and on. And so I would like to see this so that it's not dragged out for years and years and years that we have a reasonable time frame in which this can get done and then figure that in the future, you can always change it. Makes sense. Uh, anything, anything else, Elaine? Nope, that's it. Great. Thank you. John? Yeah, just one more thing for me on the uh, urban forest management plan. Uh, it's a nice box. It's it's where it should be. The, the title is is correct. I'm, I'm hoping, and this is a clarifying sort of comment, um, I'm hoping that uh, in 
our meeting tonight, we actually get to look inside that box and and are told what what will be in the box, you know, like specifically, you know, what 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 does the outline of of, of the final report look like? Uh, how is the final report going to be expanded from the um, from the document that was just given to uh, to the, the the council? And and what types of things can we expect? What what types of Questions might they ask? Uh, are they going to use any any of the uh, the, uh, the topics in the summary of challenges and opportunities identified collaborators? Any of that going to be in there? Just just what's going to be in, in, in there? Um, I was sort of a bit taken back that uh, that we're just uh, finalizing the uh, the goals and visions, which was supposed to help guide the report. We're just finalizing that in December, and we're we're going to get a draft a copy of the report next month. So I'm just not really clear, you know, uh, you know what's going to be there, what's not going to be there, uh, are uh, you know what has what have the consultants uh, taken into account? We've spent an awful lot of time on the goals and visions, and there doesn't seem to be a lot of time to incorporate or explain to us why not, why they aren't being in, in incorporated if we only have, uh, say, 30 days between now and when we were being asked to, to, to comment on it. So I think we've spent a lot of time in it and I don't really see, I'd like to know how all this work and all this time will be used in, in the, 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 uh, the uh, final report. Thanks. Thank you. So, um, I guess the in, in talking about the urban forestry uh, management plan, we have two different sections in the meeting tonight: the A and the B. And I think the you know the A is the goals and the vision, and the B is the the much meatier um, actual uh, report back from consult the the consultants uh, and. Uh, so I think we'll get into a lot of what you're asking about in more in, in B tonight. Yeah. Um, but good, very good questions, in my opinion. Um, so I'm not seeing any other hands. So I, I, let's take uh, public comment and then we'll go into discussion and any potential revisions to the uh, set to part A. So I plan on taking public comment again for part B. So at this point uh, during A, I'd like to hold uh, the, the comments just to the vision and goals uh, document uh, where other comments about the, uh, the plan can come in, in uh, section B. With that, um, is there any public comment on uh, the goals and vision? Yes, we have one public commenter, Alan Hirsch. You can go ahead and unmute yourself and share your comment. Yes, thank you. Is the consultant in the room? Under yes. California state law, uh, I'm supposed to be able to face the committee. I can't see them because of gallery view. Is the consultant in the room listening to my public comment? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, uh, this is a, the, the vision document. This shows a lot of work. It's very thorough. High kudos to Colin and Larry and uh, who else was involved? This is a very comprehensive document. Thank you, Rick. Reflects a lot of work. Um, just some, some things on, I think the inventory is very important, kind of buried in here. Um, a few things that are missing. Um, the Downtown Business Association should be mentioned as a collaborator. Neighborhood and neighborhoods, neighborhoods should be mentioned in here. And school site committees should be mentioned in here. Just some ideas to kind of enhance this a little bit. I think UC Davis should be mentioned here as a collaborator because they're like, they know more about trees than we, we they forgot more about trees yesterday they will never know. We need to use that resource. We have not used those best practice resources at all. So we need to mention them as a force of collaboration. Um, I'm also concerned on the vision diagram that, that Charlie puts up, that needs to be updated because it misses a lot of things. We need to have a downtown business, downtown tree plan in that. That's part of the things we're, we're talking about, or at least a neighborhood specific vision plan, a specific tree plan for different parts of the city. I think that should be called out on that thing. I think we should, and also that mentions the tree commission, but it doesn't mention the other people involved because the management plan is about managing people as much as trees. 
And I think that we need to have a box here that mentions the tree staff on that vision plan and what the role is. And particularly in, in this visions document about changing not just the policies, but also the procedures, the day-to-day -day work plan of how things happen. Like when the planning department goes through a thing, trees need to be considered on the planning department's list when they approve a project, for example. That needs to be listed there. So there has to be a, a liaison between city, city, city non-tree staff and the tree staff. We, I'm afraid this plan is gonna be siloed. Like that's the problem with the last tree plan. Um, so, but again, this is a very comprehensive list. I hope those enhancements help. But background for some of the new people on the commission and involved with this thing. This urban forest plan is the last holdover from the old regime pre-Charlie. The original plan when we got this grant from the state was to allow 18 months to do this plan with a lot more public outlet, a lot more time. And because of the turnover in staff and because they delayed two and a half years before starting the plan, we're doing this plan in nine months. So the consultant has to have to, have to truncate the public input and truncate your time to see this. This is really a, a sadness. This is, Char this is not Charlie's problem. We're, we're having to deal with this problem. And I hope you, you, we have a lot of things with open questions. We don't need to solve anything, but make sure you put a placeholder in there and say, we need to do the following. These are the following implementation steps. So call out, thick, call out the procedures, call out all the things that need to be done and make some suggestions of prioritization of that thing. Because again, so this, we're moving ahead. This is a great list. I hope my enhancements help, but um, uh, make sure you put placeholders for all the things we still need to do and, and the drive it, drive it ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alan. There Any are no additional public comments at this time. Thank you. Uh, so coming back to the commission then, um, the uh, we, we can now go into some discussion and then if people have specific uh, suggestions for um, updates to the uh, to the to the vision and goals, uh, we can put those on the screen and 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 do some specific uh, thing things with that. So we had talked. Uh, Cheryl had some specific things that she wanted to bring to us from the planning commission. So I'm going to go ahead and and call on on Cheryl first, and then uh, Jim and Larry. I see that you have your hands up. Uh, we'll get to you too, right after Cheryl. Great, thank you, uh, Chair. Appreciate that. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen, and uh, I am hoping that this, like I said, that this is all going to be helpful to you. So I'm hoping you can see the plan in enough. Uh, um, excuse me, not the plan, but the list in enough uh, space to be helpful. Um, so this is the list that uh, basically uh, we submitted in September 15th regarding um, the issues that the Planning Commission has had in regards to the urban forest in the past. And then I have added underneath that in bold um, my review of the documents in the current um, packet. And uh, you can see, uh, for example, item one is the guide for tree appraisal doesn't seem to um, include significant, uh, really all the environmental and community benefits that accrue with uh, large trees. And so, for example, uh, if you cut down a tree, you're you're actually affecting the community, not just your own uh, piece of property. And so we've seen that. Um, tr so tree removal mitigation fees is um, what we're suggesting that those be updated to actually compensate for the loss of environmental and cultural values and don't believe the guide for plant appraisal does that, although none of us are arborists. So it's kind of a open question of uh, whether it's actually, um, you know, comprehensive enough uh, to do that. I reviewed the guide for tree appraisal to try and understand what was, uh, you know, how those trees were, tree fees were assessed. And um, it's not entirely clear. 
So on this item, 7A, I've highlighted, it doesn't seem like there is a, a policy. And so I'd like to, you to consider recommending developing policy guidance to properly assess the environmental benefits of private trees proposed to be removed during development. So that's that's item one, and I'd be glad to send this uh, send this off, uh, email this out. And can you hold on this? Can you um, scroll back for a sec? I just want to make sure I get that all down. Sure. Got it. Thank you. Great. So item two is regarding the uh, stormwater management. Uh, we have seen over and over again where a significant amount of existing trees need to be removed in uh, par on parcels proposed to be developed in order to accommodate stormwater infiltration or drainage systems. And the Environmental benefits of stormwater are, are quantified on um, in the document, uh, the, the draft uh, document that's attached to this um, agenda on page ES2 and also on page 35. But there's no there's no policy guidance in this document on how to better protect and enhance stormwater management. We're actually losing stormwater management capacity right now because we're removing mature trees to put in infiltration basins. So having better policy guidance would be really helpful. So item three, I think that's been um, pretty well dealt with. So I, I appreciate that. Item four, uh, designating native valley oak trees over five inches. Um, you know, right now the landmark trees have to be pretty large to actually be, to qualify as, as landmark trees. And um, I think that, that we should do a better job of developing policy guidance to better protect our smaller native oak trees. So maybe updating the, um, the landmark tree code does that go into this these goals? I don't know, but I think I think there's a would be a place for that to include a policy to better protect our smaller native oak trees. So item five is regarding um, let's see, following up on um, kind of monitoring the um, projects that the Planning Commission sees and approves, they get built, and then a few years down the road or 10 years down the road, the trees are cut or pruned terribly or, or uh, not managed properly, allowed to die. And we've really lost the, um, the promise that, that the developer makes to the community when they get that approval. So we uh, are recommending, and I think there are a number of places where this might, you might be able to adjust the policy language to, um, to better monitor and provide stronger protection for private trees that are required as part of planning approval or code. So I noted there were a number of places where there was some language. Yeah. Okay. Item six, I think, uh, is pretty well covered. Item seven, committing to a long-term urban forest man uh, funding strategy. I don't see anything in the uh, in the policies regarding uh, developing uh, 
or identifying potential funding options. But I think uh, that's certainly worthy of uh, worthy of a, a policy to um, to look for those uh, funding opportunities in some way. Item eight. Uh, this is regarding the downtown Davis specific plan. Uh, our uh, dedicated Lorax just talked about that, and I think we've got that pretty well resolved. It's uh, there's a little bit of a policy in your um, document. This this document, um, but I'd like to see a little more focus on coordination with utilities because in especially in downtowns. That's the the most significant thing that really affects the placement and the survivability of the trees is the are the utilities, the coordination with the utilities, the the uh, the street lights, the underground utilities, the you, the um, the boxes um, that are above ground, clearances for water lines and things like that. So I think. Um, really adding information about coordination with utilities, I think would be really helpful. Item nine is uh, regarding the solar panels, which uh, someone already mentioned this evening. And uh, what we're hoping for is some policy guidance, which allows the planning commission to make reasonable findings and proposed mitigation of environmental benefits lost when a conflict occurs. So when a, when someone wants to replace mature trees in a parking lot with solar panels, that we have some policy guidance. And if it's, and if it's not feasible, we need policy guidance that allows the projects to be denied. It needs to be real specific and it could be in the urban forest management plan. Um, it would need to also be in the in the code, but uh, would like to see that policy guidance rest in the urban forest management plan if that's uh, if that's possible. And then just two other issues um, that are have significance to. Um, well, I think one that has significance to this document um, in 7A is there's really nothing about historic landscapes. And so uh, I recommend that um, removing or replacing private or community trees on or adjacent to historic landscapes as determined by the Secretary of Interior Standards for the Treatment of Historic Properties shall consider the historic context. We have um, properties like that in the downtown. And right now, um, those there's no consideration for uh, the Secretary of Interior Standards. And I think that's, uh, that's a real loss and um, it needs to be considered. There needs to be policy guidance in this document for that. And, uh, and I'll save the last one for, um, for the for item, um, I think the review of the document itself that the consultant's going to do. So that's all I have. Um, I can stop sharing this unless anybody wants to see a, another part of this. Thanks, Cheryl. Um, I appreciate you uh, going through that with us. Um, I, you have a number of uh, excellent, uh, very specific recommendations. Too, yes. which uh, I, I think will be very helpful. Um, I guess I want to see what uh, the other the other hands that are up are uh, about, and then uh, we'll turn to the uh, to the overall document. And perhaps uh, there's places that these the policy recommendations can be incorporated into goals as appropriate. Does that sound good? Okay, uh, Jim. In terms of the the document uh, as as we've seen it, I have three very specific, uh, really editorial comments, 
or suggestions. Basically, I thought that the vision and, and statement of goals and policies were, were very excellent. Um, but three, three specific uh, editorial things. For the vision statement, as I've already said, I would change the, the word from community to urban uh, so that it coincides with our notion that we're dealing with all trees, uh, both public and private. In goal one, policy 1 1.6, it calls for an annual assessment of sequestration. And that seems to me excessive. Uh, it'll be a huge bureaucratic and, and, and financial burden. And so I would suggest that we change that to a biennial or, or even every three year uh, assessment of uh, sequestration. And then under goal six, uh, policy 6.3, there's at the end of it, there's sort of a dangling phrase that doesn't refer to anything. So that uh, either needs to be uh, uh, rectified or, or deleted. In terms of Cheryl's comments, um, I support virtually everything that she said. I think there's very excellent, but I'm not sure uh, that they uh, pertain to this, this particular document that we're looking at in 6A. Uh, or 7A, whichever we're doing. Um, the, uh, the vision and goal statement, to my great pleasure, refer both to public and private trees. And so that seems to incorporate much of what she's saying. And it may be some of her specific points would get incorporated as uh, policy statements, but much of what she's referring to are things that we've talked about in terms of ordinance or, or uh, separate, separate, separate kinds of documents. So I'll, I'll just leave it at that, except to, to, to second the notion that we, we very much want to coordinate with planning commission and that I appreciate and, and support virtually everything that she said. It's just a question of where that, where that gets uh, accomplished. Um, I'm done. You can call and you can go on to the next person. I think we may have dropped yeah, Colin. Well, then the next Sorry, person was John Ruder. Why don't you go, John? <laughs> Hi, You're on mute, John. Larry, as a, as now acting chair, should I should I go? Go. Okay. Um, the one uh, going along with what Jim was saying about the sp specifics of it, the only thing I think should be either added or emphasized, and if it's there, please tell me, is uh, a policy for reduction of, he of heat island effect. Uh, I think uh, Jason brought this up very early in the meeting, and I don't, uh, I see a lot of tree canopy. Um, but I think um, a policy, there should be a policy about, uh, about uh, focusing in on reduction of, of, uh, of a heat island effect. The other thing, again, I'm probably gonna drill myself into the ground saying this probably for the rest of the evening, but what the heck. Um, I think Cheryl's points were extremely good. I, I think we've all been asking ourselves these same types of things. And you know, Jim made the comment. It, 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 it depends on, on on where they're most appropriate to go. And I um, I think that you know, naming naming this, and I'm probably going to get a lot of pushback, or if any comments are made. Uh, I mean, the management plan, a management plan, to me, is really all three levels of uh, of, of the chart. That uh, that uh, that Charlie puts up. I mean, that's the that's the the management plan for the forest, urban forest. It's it's the ordinance. It's 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 uh, what whatever all those other things were. The technical, the um, you know all that stuff. Plus plus uh, uh, plus whatever we're going to call the whatever they're calling the plan now. That all of those together are the uh, the uh, plan. Okay, and I think it's a bit of a, and it might be too late, you know, but I, I think it's really a, 
a misleading and misnomer because there are so many issues. Uh, Cheryl had them. I'm looking at this uh, September 2 um, from Davy to the city of Davis, summarizing the challenges and opportunities identified by, collab by collaborators. I, I mean, all these things have, should be discussed by the tree commission and the community and, and they should be put someplace. Now, to me, a management plan might give us some advice as to where should these go? Given the fact that you've got that chart that's up on the screen now, you know, would all these things that are, are valid go someplace here? Where would they go? Do you need to create new boxes to, um, uh, to, 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 to accommodate them? That's a, that's all plan to me, you know, uh, uh, right now. And again, I'll, I'll find out later on, I hope the document that went to the city council could be a, a, a partial, you know, just an update of where they are now. And that's great, which is why I really want to know what's, uh, uh, what's, what's in there. But at the moment, that document is pretty much saying what's there and what are the resources and nice section on pests, things I didn't know, um, you know, but we need, we need this document to put together all these boxes. And as I say, identify what boxes we need to deal with the opportunities and challenges identified by the, the collaborators. And is this flow diagram enough? Do we need more? I think that's the kind of thing that we need a consultant who has done these and who knows the field uh, way better than anybody else, but, but, but Charlie, um, I mean, that's, I think that's the kind of advice that, that we need. And the plan is, the plan is not gonna be a plan unless it includes everything or, or what we need to in, in include it all. So I, I will apologize if I say this again, or at least I'd, I'd like some, some f feedback on it. Uh, the, the procedures for these council, these commission meetings is such that you make a comment, uh, nobody's really allowed to, to, to discuss it and, and you move on. So, so I really say it over and over because I really don't know how it's, it's, it's being uh, it, it accepted or, or not. So anyway, uh, thanks, that's it for me. Thank you, John. I appreciate you saying that. I think that's my challenge is I'm, I'm, my role is to talk to you about the planning commission issues and then report back to the planning commission and say, these things are being addressed or they're not appropriate to be addressed now. And I've had no way of really doing that to go back to the planning commission and saying, you had these nine issues and items you know one and two are going to be dealt with or item three isn't appropriate or you know there's a problem with this so that's really important to me to be able to go back and not just say oh here's the draft plan figure it out whether your stuff's been incorporated or not that, that's not going to work for us thank you Okay, I don't uh, know if Colin's back on, but so I'm gonna make. I'm back, but oh, yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Um, network flaked out. Um, where where were you, where were you gonna go next, Larry? Uh, me, Larry. Comments and then Elaine. Larry then Elaine. Um. So my people have said a lot of stuff, and I agree with it. Um. But I think one of the things that was missing in the, I mean, it, and as John kind of said, it as a management plan, there needs to be a description of the enforcement mechanisms and process and how, how the enforcement is going to act as part of managing the plan. If it's a management plan, right, how do we manage it? And and I think the enforcement of the tree ordinance is a big part of managing the plan. So I think that needs to be in there. Um, and just a comment on Cheryl's, yeah, removing trees for stormwater infrastructure. 
Um, apparently, you know, Village Homes is 50 years old and we haven't learned that you can in fact have a perfectly better functional stormwater system than culverts and ditches. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to say, but I guess I didn't take a note. So that'll be it, Elaine. Yeah, um, I am happy to say that all of the Utility Commission's concerns were incorporated into the um, vision and goal, so I'm very happy about that. I do agree, though, I think Cheryl's comments about the Planning Commission, there's very specific concerns that the Planning Commission has been wrestling with that need to be addressed. So my suggestion would be for this commission to actually approve incorporating her suggestions into wherever it fits and let the consultant sort it out. Let the consultant figure out where the different things need to be. But I think we pretty much can all agree that every single one of her concerns are valid. Thank you. Was that everything, Elaine? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Great. Uh, so I see Alan has his hand up and then John. Uh... I just had a question regarding Elaine's comment there about um, what uh, putting things into the, the plan or not. Who, is this a question, who directs the consultant to do that? Suppose we were to agree on a list of things or, or, or the planning commission has things, who tells the consultant to put things into the, into the plan? So as a, a summary, I mean, all of the comments that we've received online um, through our public events, uh, through these discussions, um, in addition to the information that was provided from the commissions are provided to the consultants in this process and have been. So all of that material has gone to them to incorporate into um, the work that they're doing on the plan. Um, as I understand it, there will be a um, uh, sort of response in terms of what was included and what wasn't um, and why um, in, in the work of the plan in those comments. Um, but we have been providing that information directly to them through this, this whole process. But my question is, so suppose, I mean, there are lots of comments, some of them are contradictory, some of them are not appropriate for that document. Who filters those things and, and you know, gives a hierarchy of importance to those comments? So that's a conversation that we can have, you know, with the consultant for our next item because they will be with us for that next item. Um, I'm assuming that would be a collaboration uh, in the draft form between the consultant staff and the public in their review of the draft. Thank you. Good questions. Um, John? Yeah, I, I'd like to get back to Alan's point because uh, I don't think I don't think the answer really addressed what I believe is his question was. Um, it sort of I think his question was, who decides which of all these comments? Which there's 35 on on the September 2nd memo. There's nine that uh, that Cheryl had, and there's probably more. Perhaps there are questions that we had as well as a commission. So so. Say there are forty or fifty, at least. I I think, I think the question I had from his comment, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, Alan, but I think the question is, who decides which of those issues will be included in in this report? It's not, and if I heard you right, and I apologize if I didn't, I think the response was. Um, well, that'll be something that'll go between the public and the consultant. Well, this September 2nd document has already been a discussion between the public 
and the consultant. So Alan's question is very fair and it really gets to my point that I keep on har har harping on and I really don't get a, an answer to it, is, is, is which of these things will be included in there and what, uh, and what um, uh, uh, you know, and, and who then says to the consultant, no, this is really important and we want you to include number two or number five or this and that. And so it appears right now that, that the, you know, they got 50 comments or 60 comments. And now it seems to be, uh, be up to the consultant to, uh, to, to pick those things. And in that regard, and I, I hope I'm wrong, that it seems that it's, uh, the, the consultant is trying to drive a bus uh, or is driving the bus uh, that the city has claimed over and over again that they want this really, uh, you know, they want all this public in, in input and they want this and that. And, 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 and it seems that the city is not driving the bus on this and, 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 the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the consultant is. So I think my interpretation of Alan's question is, who is? You know, is this all up to the discretion of the consultant or what is the city doing? And I guess we could ask the city that question without the consultant here. And I'll be really curious as to what they say as well. But what what has what what is the uh, city's attitude in this? And, and what role have they been playing in trying to figure out which which of the issues should, should be uh, in, included in, the, in in this plan? Thank you, John, for the clarification. Yeah. So. Um, Colin, can I comment on that? Yeah, well, uh, yes, in just one sec. I just want to say this, that um, so we're, we're getting pretty far into B while we're, and which is understandable, because if you're talking about the goals and the vision, right, you're, you might end up talking about a lot of things. Um, and I, I have a lot of the same uh, frustrations. Uh, that, that I'm hearing expressed, and I'm I'm on board with that. I'm just trying I'm trying to think of uh, this in terms of workable process. How we're going to get through things tonight, too. Um, and so, um, I want to make sure that we uh, give the consultant an opportunity to present tonight, and that you know uh, that after the consultant presents is probably, um, you know, that that is a really good time, I would think, to dig into why is this in there? Why isn't this in there? Who makes the decision? Um, whereas the document that's before us in section A of the goals and the vision, that is entirely up to us to put together what we, our suggestions. And so we have the power to, to edit and change that and submit that. Um, and we're we're getting pretty far down the road towards talking about B while we're we're while A is in front of us. Um, one option would be to table A and receive the consultant's presentation and come back to A after B. Um, so we'd have an ABBA night. We'd do ABA. <laughs> but uh, the um, but I want to make sure that we're focused on like actually making progress. So with that, Larry, is there something do you, do you want to add? Yeah, so process. Yeah. It actually seems obvious to me, but I don't know. Um, the consultant is writing the management plan. That is, in fact, what they are hired to do. They are doing it with input. And just like the downtown plan on Tuesday, the planning commission did not approve the downtown plan we are not going to approve the management plan. We are going to recommend approving or not approving or possibly approving with these additions. City council is the final arbiter of whether the final plan gets approved. And so if things are in there that they don't want in there, they get taken out. If things are not in there that they do want in there, and they, I mean, three at least, if they're not in there, then they get put in there. That's, and anybody, anybody, community staff, commissioners can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that is the process. We 
are making recommendations. That's it. John? Colin, can I make a suggestion to, to move us forward as, yep. as you're as you're you're asking for? I I I, I may be wrong, but I think uh, Jim and I provided specific comments on the goal. We've already discussed the visions. Jim and I provided these specific comments on the goals. I think others did too. Uh, um, can we just call for um, uh, any more uh, specific comments on the goals and then take a, 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 a vote? Because like, like people are saying, we, this is, this is, these are our thoughts. Uh, it, it, they're going to go where they have to go, um, but I don't think we need to. Uh, I personally don't need to hear from the consultant to know what the goals and and policies that I think are Im important. So I'd recommend that you call for for any other comments, specific comments, yeah. on, on how to to do this, uh, vote, and then move on. I, I, so I think that that sounds great, John. And what I would propose is that we put them up on the screen. We add in a couple things, uh, and then we and then we vote and move ahead. Um, I see Elaine has her hand up, so let's take her hand first because she may be talking about process two or others. But uh, I think that's the good way forward. Elaine. Yeah, my only concern is that some of Cheryl's uh, suggestions might fit within the goal. So if you go and approve this thing, then that's a problem. So I think I would suggest what you had suggested, which is A, B, A. Mm -hmm. Just leave this, go ahead with B, and then come back to A, because A it would be simple enough. But I think also that as far as process, this commission has the right to recommend all of Cheryl's suggestions to the city council, regardless of what the, what the consultant says. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, and, and actually, when I say let's put this up on the screen and add things in, I want to, uh, Cheryl has very specific points and I've taken notes on them. She's uh, so that we could um, bring those back and consider each one. Do, does it belong in the goals and vision? Where does it go? Plug them in if they do and, and move, move on. Um, so I see Jim and Larry. Well, I guess you just suggested an alternative. What I was going to suggest, it seems to me, that dealing with with Cheryl's things would, is is a little bit more complicated than what we can do tonight. I would prefer to deal with the the uh, as John was suggesting uh, what's written there. But then, as 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 Larry said, we are advising the uh, uh, the consultant. So we would advise the consultant that we support what what. Cheryl has has submitted, and the, leave it to the uh, the consultant to figure out how to incorporate that. I think it's just going to be too complicated for us working tonight to figure out how to incorporate all of that. Uh, here, here. That, that's just that's just my sense of of what's feasible tonight. Here, here. <laughs> yeah, Larry. Um, I move that the City of Davis Tree Commission recommend including uh, Commissioner Essex's comments in the urban forest management plan and in policies related to the urban forest. Do we have a second? Second to that, Ellen. Okay, uh, so uh, any discussion on this motion? Um... Yeah, I have a, I have a point in. Yeah. And again, I totally agree with with the nine points. Um, but again, there were all these opportunities and challenges identified for by collaborators. Some is, uh, uh, Alan was saying, some are redundant, some are maybe off the off the track, whatever. But I, um, with all due respect to the planning commission, I don't think that just those should be singled out. I think those should be included in, in, in a, a larger list. I mean, it's great that, that these are questions that they have and it's great that, that the planning commission really wants to examine them. I think it's terrific, but 
they're, they're not in, in a class by themselves. So I think that uh, we could say both. We could say, you know, those things and that and that we think the city should go, somebody should go through all these other th the 35 that were identified. But I, I just don't want to leave. I mean, we've asked everybody to help and everybody to collaborate and everybody to identify things. And, um, and just by saying, you know, we support just these nine without addressing these other ones, I think is a... Uh, is is the not, not not being fair to what the to what this the is that the city has has asked for okay but we're um, not i mean all so, comments Barry, can you hold on just one sec um adrian um i have a question that i'm a little concerned uh that this is a document that's been emailed around to the commission mid-meeting and is uh, is not properly before the public for us to move on tonight i'm wondering if this is better done uh, as an agendized item at a, at a future meeting than a motion now. Can you comment on, Adrian, can you comment on if this is something where we would be able to do tonight? So there's, there's a couple of things to consider here. One is the timeline um, that we would like to be able to get this information to the consultant as uh, you know, finalized by the commission to incorporate into the planning process. Um, the longer that we take, as you mentioned previously, you know, the, the harder that will be to to include that information um, in, in the work that we're doing. Um, that is certainly no one's goal. Um, I, do, I do see that there are a number of policy recommendations that would um, be completely appropriate for the commission to take up um, in those discussions of the ordinance and in the policy guidance updates that we'll be having in the future. Um, I, I think no one here is gonna say that the urban forestry program is perfect and we have no issues. Um, and we know we have work to do. We are at the start in a lot of ways of that process right now, um, moving through this management plan and setting our goals and our vision for you know the next um, number of years um, for the work that we're going to be doing. We know that's going to be a lot of work um, in in putting everything um, how this commission, uh, the city, and the community would like to see it. Um, to directly address your question, um, we do not always have all of the documents associated with the discussions um you know at hand uh sometimes they are presented to the commission on the day um that is possible we can do that the challenge with this is is whether it completely addresses the goals and vision i think the way that um that cheryl has put it together um she's spoken specifically to each of the policies and where there might be modifications um, because of that, because that document was developed, we can post it online um, directly after the meeting. We could have action on it, um, but if the commission is not comfortable with that and would like to have that document publicly available for a longer period of time, uh, that is that is a choice you can make as well. Okay, um, I feel like that assuaged my concerns, Larry. So. This motion does not negate any other comments that were presented by any other member of the community. It's a, it's a well thought out public comment and we're just saying, hey, check this out. That is literally what this motion is doing. Yeah. It is not saying, don't look at any other comment. It is not saying these are our only recommendations. It is not saying that. Okay. Um... So, John, uh, I see your hand. Um, Elaine, you looked like you were gonna raise your hand too briefly there. Um, uh, I guess I just wanna say I, I favor the motion. We have a motion in a second. We're in discussion on the motion. Uh, so I'll call on you, John. Yeah, I, I don't see why we can't um, take those nine suggestions. And uh, as we're going through the, um, the goals, see which ones fit into to policy. I mean, it's, it's nothing like in this word. motion yeah. prevents us from doing that. Yeah. So let's not talk over each, each other. Um, I'll try to be good about calling on everybody. Um, so well, we have a motion and a second. Um, we're, we're in discussion on the motion. Um, and at some point, we're going to call the question and, ha and, and have a vote. Um, so I see Elaine's hand is up. So I want to call on Elaine. Um, and I, I, John, I sense that you might want to say more. We'll come back to you. 
Larry, I see you have your hand up too. If you mean to say more, we'll come back to you too. Uh, Elaine? Yeah, I think Larry had it right. Uh, all we're doing is saying, look, as the tree commission, we wanna recommend Cheryl's comments and we want you to take them seriously. That's all we're doing. Doesn't preclude you know, other comments from other people or whatever. It's just to make sure that these get in now. That's it. Colin, if I may interject just very briefly, um, this document that was provided by Cheryl was also posted on September 15th um, to our commission page, not with the edits that are currently in relating to the vision and goals, um, but that document is posted in the September 15th meeting uh, agenda page. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm not seeing any more hands at this point. Uh, so let's conclude discussion and uh, take a vote on the motion. Um, is it possible to restate the motion? Yes. The motion is to move that the City of Davis Tree Commission recommend including Commissioner Essex comments in the urban forest management plan and policies related to the urban forest. Okay, uh, so with that, starting at the top of the list as it appears on the <laughs> website, uh, Jim Kramer. Hi. Ann Daniel? Aye. Larry Gunther? Aye. Alan Lowry? Aye. John Ruder? Aye. And Colin Walsh? Aye. Great. Uh, so with that, um, let's look at the, can we look at the goals and make sure that the edits uh, that came from, that John and Jim suggested are, are in there and so that we can move to um, to finish on the goals and vision. Colin, would you like me to share the screen? Yeah, would you be comfortable with doing that and adding? Absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate that, Adrian. So I think the first one was in the second line uh, where it says community, that we would update that to urban. Um, and then down in policy 1.6. Uh, the uh, second to the last line there says community forest again. Yeah, good. Uh, so Thank that should know. be urban forest. Good catch. Yeah. Oh, and just above that, there's another, just above that, the value of our urban forest. Yeah. Good. Thank you. So then I, I think it was 1.6, uh, the suggestion was to change from annual to three-year basis. Great. Um, I have actually a comment on that. Yeah, Larry. Um, I actually disagree with that because it, developing the sequence, sequ sequestration metric is not a start from zero every time if we've this is an if a big if but if we've got a really good uh list of tree the tree inventory a lot of that stuff like that can be done in an excel spreadsheet right with automatic you you add a at January 1st, you add a year to the age of the tree and it does the math. Like, I, I don't know that developing that, the number for that metric is, is such an onerous task or at least doesn't need to be. Um, and the thing is we need to, one of the things that has stuck with me is that um, we've, the city, Council declared a climate emergency several years ago. We we still don't have a total greenhouse gas meter or anything on the City of Davis website, at least not that I've seen. So 
we actually do need to be continually updating where we are in sequestration, in greenhouse gas emissions, carbon, blah, blah, blah. And so I actually like that it's annual. That's just my thought. Okay, um, so we have two opinions here. John? I think relative to the um, amount of change that you'll get, um, I think uh, I think one year is 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 e is e excessive. Um, I think our uh, level of significance or or level of confidence that this model is giving us the right uh, information. Uh, I don't think they. I think in a city with over thirty thousand um, uh, city trees, I, I think the amount of change relative to what's going on now is going to be really small. Okay, and uh, you know, either to me, either a tree is removed, which removes its uh, its ability, uh, which you know, I, I guess we could tell that um, a tree grows, which means it'll have more uh, of an ability, uh, or a, a new tree is, is planted. I think such a little of that goes on during the year that to burden Charlie with this and get it a number that would be meaningful for me to say, oh yeah, this happened this year and this happened that year. I think that level of, uh, of, re of re resolution really doesn't, really doesn't tell you much uh, by annual, for an annual basis. And I think it just adds more, more, more work to Charlie. Jim? Since we're making recommendation to the uh... The city staff and consultant, uh, I, I, I can live with annual. Um, in my mind, I've done assessments. You know, I used to teach statistics and so on, and, and assessments are usually fairly lengthy, uh, cumbersome, and, and problematic efforts. But if it's, as Larry suggested, just sort of, sort of a computerized automated thing, then annual is fine. Um, but uh, I'm wondering what Charlie thinks uh, in terms of the uh, what's involved here in terms of, of uh, time and, and, and money for the staff and so on to do uh, annual assessment. What do you think, Charlie? Uh, having never done it officially, um, I'm pretty sure it's similar to what Larry's suggesting. I'm pretty sure, and I'm sure the consultants will probably clarify this a bit more, but I think the tree keepers canopy app that they they've created and utilized kind of does that as a running metric. So I, I, I think one of the big things tied to the management plan is going to be like annual updates of all the metrics. So I would imagine it's kind of a component of that, but I can't say for positive. So you're good with weekly then is what you're saying. <laughs> oh, if it's automated <laughs> real time. Cool. Uh, Larry. So, um, so I get what you're saying, John, and I'm sorry that I get frustrated, but that is, I, I, as you all know, I get frustrated. Anyway, a tree, and Charlie will correct me if I'm wrong, a tree puts on as much biomass in one year when it is 100 years old as it put on in its first 50 years. So, and any addition to a tree's carbon capture, sequestration, blah, blah, blah. You said it yourself, John, we're multiplying by 30,000. So I think that's actually like six orders of magnitude bigger than the number of one gallon trees that we plant in a year. That's my opinion. So I think what I'm hearing is a annual, is that we'll keep annual as a goal. We can take yeah, a that's fine with fine with me. Yeah, I agree. Great. Uh, so then I had something on policy six point three. Yeah. So I, I I'm looking at six point three. That fragment I cannot even remember why that fragment would be there. So uh, other so my my thought is to delete that. Right. It seems like it's an errant uh, copy paste or something. While you're there, it says CFMP instead of UFMP. Oh, good. 
Um, Colin oh. might not have been up above too. Six point one, yeah. The yeah. the part we deleted could yeah. that be be could the second half of that sentence been um address or not addressed but uh check I'm I'm losing the word sorry but so so that every year you look at what were our goals what were our policies and are we achieving them I mean uh let's see I can look back at an earlier draft but it but if but update on a regular basis carries it so I I'm fine leaving it off Okay. Great. Uh, so I think those were the, were there other comments, John? I see your hand. Yeah, yeah, two, one, uh, Larry, correct me if I'm wrong. I've, I've always, um, I've always heard you sort of espouse that uh, when you, when you don't put a number to it, like on a regular basis, and you don't put a, a time limit, a specific time limit, then that just gives everybody the reason, a reason to, uh, to not do it. Do you, do you still agree with that? Or do you think uh, that should be put part of this? 100%, uh, I, are we taking that out? Well, it says on a, on a, on a regular basis. Regular is a pretty weaselly word, right? Good catch. Um, yeah, I'd put, a, I'd put a number on that in, in, in a unit of time. Good catch, John. I think in a different, place we say something so in the policy 6.4 we do say implement progress reports for an annual check-in to inform the tree commission community and council of progress that could be modified if, if annual is the the desired frequency that could be modified to include um, any additional information that you would like um, otherwise you know we would see that as an annual check-in of the program and the um, progress towards those metrics um, as discussed actually maybe point three and point four ought to be swapped and on and on six point four you can take out the word in mm -hmm. okay i think the swapping is a good idea john yeah it seems it yeah I, I, I think that um, I think that one of these is saying that we're going to get an annual check, um, you know, on the progress of the of the plan. You know, where are we? Where, where are we with it? What are we doing? You know, what do we need to be doing, and so forth. The update of the plan is a whole different thing. It's it's you know, I think perhaps it could be uh, re, re, re re review the plan every three years or whatever date we're going to pick but i don't necessarily means that we have to hire city has to hire a consultant every three or five years to uh to update a plan uh it could be updated when 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 a review says hey there's there are too many things that are that are that are that are out of date so i think if you just say review the the ufmp every three to five years what or whatever time people would like John, it does say at the top of the goal here um, to adopt the urban forest management plan to guide long term tree planting and maintenance activities and update it on an ongoing basis with a review every five years. Would okay. you like that to say every three to five years? No, I guess my only question would be then. No, I didn't see that. Sorry. Do we need policy six four if we have it up under the goal? Well, to your point, John, review and update are different things. I think you make a really good point. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, the thing is, the more often you update it, the easier the job is, to be frank. So uh, I see Anne and Alan have their hands up. So uh, Anne and then Alan. I was just going to refer to a comment someone made earlier about the term arborist in goal four just not to forget that that comment was made. I'm not sure we completed everything in goal six, so I'm sort of changing right. the topic. Okay, yeah, let's come back uh, to, to, is there, Alan, do you, are you talking about six? Yeah, I was talking about six. Okay, uh, what, what do you have to say, sir? Well, I just would say that, um, you know, a, a 
um, update of this plan would, would involve hiring a consultant. And you know, are we in a position to say when the city has to hire a consultant to do this, or should someone else, you know, make a judgment based on need and circumstances? That's all. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna poke in and just say I think we can make a recommendation, uh, and uh, but it's not ours to to decide 100. percent Larry. That's exactly what I'm going to say. We are not writing the law. We are not writing the policy. We are making recommendations. Elaine? Yeah, I just don't see the purpose of 6.4. It just repeats what's mm -hmm. at the top and what's it's on 6.3. I mean, it's redundant unless I'm missing something. It makes sense to me. John? Yeah, I, 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 I agree. If it's under the first sentence, then we don't need it in, in 6.4 because they don't even say the same thing. Mm -hmm. So one is regular, one is five years. All right. So, so I'm hearing to strike 6.4. Right. Great. Okay. The other okay. thing, Colin, that we didn't that we didn't go over yet was uh, the suggestion, and I don't know whether it goes into goal two for the planting, but uh, but just the uh, you know, develop and implement a specific plan to increase to decrease uh, heat, heat heat island effect. So, say again, where was that? Uh, it's either in it's either in goal one or goal two, but it could go between one four and one five. It's um, uh, it, it's it's to develop and implement a plan uh, to increase canopy uh, in order to to decrease heat, heat heat island effect. Okay, so maybe a, a new uh, new policy there. I think that's a yeah. great idea. Yeah, great. Okay, while well, she's typing, uh, do, are there other specific comments uh, or recommendations? I know we have to come back to the question of uh, arborist versus manager. Okay, um, I guess any other thoughts on policy 1.5? I'm not seeing any, any hands, so I'm assuming that means everybody agrees. Uh, so let's look at the question of an the arborist title. Um, Charlie, do you have a, a any thoughts on this? Um, technically, my title is urban forestry manager. I'm not sure if it was city arborist before. Um, City arborist is a pretty commonly used phrase for the person that runs the forestry uh, program within a city. Um, the only other comment I'll make is that the term arborist typically is to a certified qualified arborist, um, which I think is kind of important. But um, if it's to a specific staff position in this in city of Davis, then it would probably be urban forestry manager. If I could provide just a little bit of background, when the 2002 plan was developed, we actually didn't have a city arborist. Um, and so the reference to that position was to, you know, provide and maintain one. Um, we could certainly update it to say, you know, the urban forest manager um, for those places where that would be applicable. Yeah. So the, my only question is, uh, do we have a desire to have an arborist on city staff? And is that something we'd like to call out here specifically? Um, otherwise, if the answers, if people are indifferent on that, I think there's nothing wrong with the, changing it to urban forest manager. Uh, Charlie? Just for, 
just for clarification, I am a certified arborist. Which is, oh, okay. Just, I mean, just different to title. <laughs> the, buck, the buck stops with the urban forest manager. Yeah, so that's good. Let's do that. And uh, Adrian's point is uh, exactly what I was going to say, that the, the part of why there is a, a Charlie and those who came before him is be, because uh, of the, uh, the last iteration of this plan in 2002. Can I make okay. a suggestion about what Adrian just yes. typed? Um, just make it urban forest manager, not forestry. Technically, the position is forestry. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, so I'm not seeing any other hands going up. I just, I'm wondering about the uh, recommendations from Cheryl and if any of them um, should be incorporated as. Uh, goals uh, or policies here um, to kind of run through them. There was the tree removal fees, um, uh, develop policy guidance to properly assess environmental benefit of trees, recommend developing policy guidance to better protect and enhance stormwater management, uh, recommend developing uh, policy guidance to better protect smaller native oaks, recommend developing policy guidance with monitoring and stronger protections for private trees required as part of planning or code, uh, recommend developing policy guidance regarding potential funding options uh, to better coordinate with utilities, uh, recommend developing policy guidance, uh, which allows the Planning Commission to make reasonable findings and mitigate of environmental benefits lost when this conflict occurs. Uh, if this isn't feasible, provide policy guidance to allow these projects to be denied. And additionally, uh, removing or replacing private community trees or on or adjacent to historic landscapes as determined by the, oh, this was the one about the Secretary of the Interior. Uh, treatment of historic properties and how the removal of trees affects uh, relates to that. Um, so if any of those ring out as something that should be included in the goals, now would be the, the time to add it. Uh, Larry? Yeah, I think um, including private trees in urban forest absolutely fits here. Yeah. That specifically. And then I wanted to uh, add a goal if people are, well, I want to suggest adding a goal, recommend to the commission adding a goal. <laughs> okay. Which um, is, um, describe in a general way, or I don't know how to word it exactly, describe in a general way the enforcement of the City of Davis tree ordinance and how that policy will aid in managing the urban forest. Larry, could you repeat that, please? I'll let. <laughs> you can't, can you? <laughs> no, I can. I wrote it down. I, I'll let Adrian finish typing. Adrian is amazing. But it's harder to type when people are talking. Um, she was done before you, you even started. It's, yeah. She went to the Zoe Mirable School of Typing and Describing General Way Enforcement of the City Davis Tree Ordinance and how that policy will aid in the enhance. Wow, nailed it. I don't know what other commissioners and, and our liaison think of that, but. Okay. Uh, so if there's any other thoughts on the new goal seven, uh, please speak now, uh, or if you don't like it, let us know. John? Um, yeah, I like seven. I think we're always are, are concerned about enforcement. So every place we can get it, I'm, 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 I'm fine with that. Um, um, no, I'm, I'm, uh, oh, on, on Cheryl's, uh, uh, topics, I think, um, I think the, um, the, her topic of, uh, environmental benefits of trees, I think that could be a policy, uh, uh, 
um, you know that 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 should be calculated out as fully as possible, because right now, from what I see in the report, they consider stormwater and air pollution and something else, which I, I can't remember. Uh, but I'm not quite sure whether it's the full the full uh, range of, of, of possible items. So I think that uh, one of the policy is to develop a, a more inclusive method methodology for uh, calculating the economic value of trees. Okay. Okay, I'll just let that be written out. Okay, um, so I think that's a good one to have. I think the fee one belongs in the um, uh, the tree ordinance. Um, the um, the one about stormwater uh, being on the two by two for the the parking lots, we went over stormwater a lot, um, and I think we could put in there as a policy is to consider. Uh, um, the relationship, if you will, maybe these aren't the words, consider the, uh, the um, perhaps synergistic relationship, consider the relationship between tree, uh, trees and uh, as part, or con consider the, the oh God, I'm sorry, let me just come up with this. The, um, consider the uh, extent to which trees can be incorporated into, into stormwater yield management plans. So would it be policy to consider or? Yes, yeah, right. The policy is to consider that, right. Okay. So, um, um, if I may just briefly interrupt in terms of process, yeah. I can, write these down as we're going through them and then we can fit to where they might go in the goals themselves um, rather than figuring out which goal they fit in now mm -hmm. or we can move to each goal and determine which fits best yeah i think i'm wondering right. if the yeah the goal the the first one might be more uh applicable to goal two um yeah so so we could just yeah. kind of go through them now and then see where they fit sure yep I think one of the goals of the forest management plan, we talk about the the economics uh, of you know an evaluation of the economics. So I think Cheryl's point about uh, about uh, evaluating uh, various uh, funding options is good. Um, and um, the um, the um, tie into the utilities. I think that's probably best gone someplace else. And to tell you the truth, we went through them so fast that I I, I didn't get the last two. But of those, those the, of hers, those are the ones I think uh, are, are good to have in there. Okay, thanks, John. Um, I see a couple other hands. Uh, so let's take those hands and then we'll figure out where things fit in. Uh, Anne? I'm sorry, I'm changing the subject again. I found another community or at least a C. Oh, and policy awesome. 5.1. I don't think we caught that one earlier. Oh, we did. Sorry, my apologies. Yeah. Larry. So actually, John, I'm going to take your suggestion and and go several steps. I think it should be a goal of our urban forest uh, to make trees and landscaping become the primary method of dealing with stormwater. Again, that's how they do it in village homes. It works. We've already done it 50 years ago. Uh, just a comment. There are other ways to deal with stormwater um, besides that. So <laughs> that's that's why the primary. Yeah. Not solely primary. Uh, 
I don't know if I agree with the primary. Because I uh, here's what I'm thinking. One of the ways to deal with it is make this the surfaces permeable, which is a huge thing. Yeah, that's why trees and landscaping. Mm -hmm. Would you call that landscaping? To I me, would, landscaping is yeah. bushes. Okay, so <laughs> let's... Um, so I think that there's good points there, and I know uh, that the discussion is good, but uh, we have a, a lot to do, and I, I see that our consultant has raised his hand as well. We've been meeting already for two, two hours about this. Uh, so uh, I'm going to call Alan. Uh, actually, Marcus, if there's something you want to go, I'll move you to the front of the queue. Thank you. Yes, with regards to the permeability of surfaces, harsh, hard surfaces should be permeable. There's permeable concrete, there's permeable asphalt. And I agree with Larry that trees and landscaping, not necessarily bushes, but any natural soil coverage should become the primary re, uh, avenue for stormwater management. Even the National Arbor Society has come out and said, storm water systems that we've been building in this country for the last almost 100 years where we, we wish the water away, either in through uh, stormwater drainage systems or dry wells under property are helping kill our trees. So I, that's why it should be primary. And we should also encourage permeable, uh, harsh surfaces on properties. Thank you for that. That's great input. So Alan, Jim, and then mm -hmm. Elaine. I just have a brief comment. I don't know how much longer this discussion is going to take, but we have a highly paid consultant waiting in the wings. Yep. So my sense is we're almost there. Uh, so uh, Jim and Elaine. I'm just having a problem with this process here. I mean, we're, we're I thought we had agreed that we would sort of uh, agree with what was written there, and then we would recommend that we in, that the staff and that the consultant incorporate what what uh, uh, the planning commission forwarded on. And now we're going back and incorporating stuff from the planning commission in here, and and I'm losing track of it. And uh, in terms of uh, goal seven that Larry suggested, so I don't have in front of me the whole thing, but. Somewhere in here, there were already policies about enforcement and so on, and so I don't know what's redundant. Uh, so I'm just having trouble with this whole thing, and and yeah. I think it's getting going too far and too complex. I think that's a, a solid point. I guess what I would suggest is that we incorporate these three that we have here highlighted, and um, you know, unless there's something else, in, unless anyone objects to these three. Uh, but we, we place them and we uh, we continue on. Marcus, I see your hands up too. Are you wanting to say something again? No, okay, Elaine? Yeah, just quick. I agree. Uh, I think we should let the consultant handle this, but uh, having said that, the trees and landscaping, just put in parentheses after landscaping, including permeable surfaces. That should take care of that problem. But I, I tend to agree that I think uh, the consultant should handle this. Yeah. Good. So I guess what I would suggest is um, that we let that we that um, we know that we want to incorporate these three things. I think there's slots that they can they can slide into. Um, I personally would be comfortable with uh, Adrian and staff deciding that if someone wanted to. Um, move on the uh, the document as we have. Larry? Larry Gunther moves that we mm -hmm. accept the document, accept and recommend the document that we have. Alan I'll Larry second that. Yep. OK, great. Okay. Sorry, is that um, Alan or Jim as the second? Let Jim have it. OK. Yeah, there's a there. You know, the staff keeps a uh, scorecard of that. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, hey. Every every motion you make, you owe the staff a drink. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Elaine. Yeah, you probably should include in the motion that you're including Cheryl's uh, additions. There's three policies that 
that were highlighted on the screen? No, all of Cheryl's, all of Cheryl's suggestions. That was Elaine, a second motion. Yeah, well, Elaine, if you recall, we already moved that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess I, I feel like you need to incorporate it in this motion. You need to say, you know, including whatever policies okay. are appropriate from Cheryl, Cheryl's suggestions. So you're offering a friendly amendment. Yeah. Um, so do the does the mover or the accept? Um, I do not accept it. I don't think it's necessary. We've we've accepted those specifically in a single motion. So okay. okay. So uh, is there any other discussion? Okay, not seeing any hands. Uh, we'll go from the top. Uh, Commissioner Kramer. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Daniel. Aye. Commissioner Gunther. Aye. Commissioner Lowry. Aye. Commissioner Roeder. Ruder. Aye. Aye. And uh, Colin Walsh. Uh, aye. Well done, everybody. Um. Okay, so let's take a, a brief uh, five-minute break before we move into section. B. Thanks everybody for your patience.
Colin? Yes. Um, when we start, can I make just a very important, very brief uh, comment? Uh, it's important. I want to report yeah. that the 49ers are leading 21 to 6. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> appreciate that you're focused on the uh, important things. I was debating whether to attend the meeting tonight or watch the 49ers. So it was a difficult decision. Yep. Boy, I barely it, made it. It was, it was facilitated by the fact that the 49ers, the game is on a different channel that I don't get. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say you could do both when they're in a Zoom meeting. Right. <laughs> so I guess as people come back, if you turn your cameras on, so I know you're, that, that all the commissioners are here. Looks like all the that all the commissioners are back. So we can resume. See what I did there. I like that. That's good, Colin. I like it. Did you just come up with that or do you have that in your back pocket? I just came up with it. Wow, wow. My man. Yeah. Which considering how many Zoom meetings I do. Yeah, I'm surprised you haven't come up with that before. Yeah, yeah this is my my third one today and uh, is only now becoming the longest. Oh, oh, oh Jesus. Okay, so uh, Charlie, would you like to introduce item 7B? Certainly. So to continue on our conversations of what we've been having already this evening, uh, we have our consultants from the Daily Resource Group with us this evening um, to kind of give a pre-draft update of a lot of the questions, comments that have already happened tonight. Um, and, and some based off the guidance of some comments from previous months, um, specifically the end of last month's comment. So um, without further ado, because I would love for them to get into this, but I think it'll answer a lot of your questions, concerns, uh, comments. Um, I will turn it over to Tina um, from the Davy Resource Group to give us a little bit more information about the management plan. Thank you, Charlie. And thank you, Adrian, for putting up the slideshow. Good evening, everyone. Um, as a reminder, I've seen you guys, most of you before. So just want to remind you that my name is Tina McCann. I'm a principal consultant with Davy Resource Group. And I'm joined by my asso uh, associate consultant, Dr. Rachel Sitz. Um, before we get started, I also want to acknowledge that there's been a great deal of really helpful input received this evening. And uh, we're taking our own notes on that. And we do appreciate it all of your questions and your comments and your concerns for the plan. Hopefully we'll be able to alleviate some of those with those, this presentation and uh, the question and answer period that follows. Um, as in for tonight, uh, we appreciate this opportunity to provide an update on the urban forest management plan and to share a preview of the story map that was developed for Davis. And we wanna thank everyone who participated in the photo contest that was hosted and facilitated by Tree Davis. The winning photos are featured in tonight's presentation. Uh, starting here, we'd like to congratulate Daniel Hugh for the first place submission. Next slide, please. So as an introduction to the plan and what to expect, we're gonna be looking at the site map for the plan and discussing what it is and what's in it and what to expect. And like I said, hopefully we'll answer a lot of the questions I heard this evening. Rather than a, a traditional printed plan um, that kills trees and quickly becomes static on a shelf and is also not easy to update, uh, the urban forest management plan for Davis will be housed and accessed on the city's existing website. And it won't just be a PDF, it will be an interactive plan. It'll be widely acceptable on multiple platforms, including phones, tablets, and PCs. Um, this is gonna allow the city to have easy access and the ability to update the plan over time, uh, keeping it dynamic and um, allowing them to share progress 
towards goals, communicate updates on pro and challenges, uh, and provide the tools and the resources um, that are helpful, not only to the city in managing the trees, but also to the community who's interested in those policies and, and wants to review and or see where um, more details. Uh, let's see, let's just jump in. Uh, can we go to the next slide? Excellent. So this is a big picture overview um, of a site map and what to expect. So there'll be, um, we're looking at right now at having five different pages on, on the website. So there'll be a home page that introduces the plan. We'll go into some more details uh, on each of these. Uh, there'll be a page that benchmarks the 2020 existing conditions of the urban forest along with the operations. Uh, there'll be a resources page where you can find links and information about a lot of the policies that already exist and the policies to come. Uh, there'll be a, a page called urban forest revision or something similar to that. A, a lot of this is still, you know, a little bit malleable. We're trying to figure out how everything fits together. So some names might be massaged uh, as we, we think they are more appropriate, but the urban forest vision page right now is going to have your focus areas, which uh, include the goals, the objections, and the action strategies for uh, attaining those goals and objectives. And finally, a state of the urban forest page will allow Charlie to update you on progress for the plan. So that will be a page that um, we intend to be updated regularly to be determined how regularly in discussion with Charlie. Um, and he'll he'll provide you um, what's going on. You know, we're going to talk about more of what's going to be on that page in a minute. Um, the links will allow you to explore it. Uh, allow you and the entire community to explore the contest content based on your individual interests. Um, next slide, please. So the landing page, uh, which is your home page for the plan. Again, it'll be in the city's website and easy to find. Uh, we'll include an introduction to the plan and how to use it. It will include the vision statement that is finally uh, approved for it the urban forest management plan. And there'll be a story map, which we're also gonna preview this evening. There is a story map that will serve hopefully as the executive summary for the plan. It's, a, it's an interactive web-based tool that allows you to explore the urban forest as it exists today. Um, let's see what else is gonna be on here. The benefits of trees. Um, there'll be a, a place on here that talks about the general benefits of trees, not just the ones that are quantified, but all of the ones that we know and are continuing to learn about uh, from our urban forests. We also want to acknowledge our partners and city logos and um, partner logos on this home page. There will be a side panel, depending on how the site ends up being looking, there'll be a side panel that allows you to access different parts of the plan, including the state of the urban forest, um, report the resources that are being um, put towards the trees right now, the species list that is to be developed, and a lot of the other documents also that are to be developed will be uh, available as links in this plan. And the background, which is now the um, benchmark 2020 page, as well as the references. And I just want to take a moment to acknowledge our second place photo winner here, uh, Kathleen Holder. Congratulations. Next page. Next slide, please. All right, as soon as uh, we finish with this kind of brief presentation, we're going to jump into a demonstration of the story map. As a reminder, that will be the executive summary for the plan. And next page. Next slide. All right, so first we have the landing page. Um, this next, this landing page, so you'll be able to access this from the homepage, and this will be the benchmark 2020. So this is going to benchmark everything that we learned about the urban forest uh, operations, funding, staffing, everything that we've learned in this initial phase or in the initial phases of gathering background and information and input from stakeholders, including collaborators and also the community, which is also an important stakeholder. So all of the information that we're hearing from you, receiving from council, receiving through community input, either through the website or the pop-ups or during the community meetings, 
All of that information will be summarized on here so that you know what people said, what people asked for, um, what the conditions were, because this is actually meant to be a 40 year plan. So it's really important that we be able to go back and look at the conditions when this plan was developed not only to understand why we have certain goals and objectives and action strategies, but also to be able to assess progress from this point in time to the future. Um, we'll also include talk about the history of the urban forest here um, and, uh, and we'll have our findings, key findings at this point in time. Uh, let me make sure I'm not forgetting anything I wanna talk about here. Um, sustainability indicators, which you might not be familiar with, they represent an industry developed scorecard that is helpful in assessing the sustainability and the resiliency of the urban forest resource, and uh, also the associated programming and community partners and engagement. All right, um, the next page we're going to talk about, next slide. is the State of the Urban Forest page. So the State of the Urban Forest page is meant to be one of the most dynamic pieces of the plan. Um, and again, we'll work with Charlie to decide what's an appropriate schedule for updating this. But we, um, our vision is that we'll, it will include a letter from the urban forester or the urban, forest man urban forestry manager. It's the supervisor on here. So we'll make that correction. Um, it'll serve as an annual report if it's uh, to update you on the city tree resource, what's happened, um, you know, is there any news? Have we collected an inventory? Do we have an update in the number and condition of the trees? Do we know more about the diversity? Um, any, oper any operations and service updates uh, when new staff is hired, um, when new services are added based on the plan, those can all re be reported in here. Uh, work metrics like the number of service requests, that have been um, responded to since the last update. How many trees have been trimmed? How many trees have had to be removed? And how many trees have been replaced and planted? And it'll also include the status of the plan. So any progress that has been made for the plan could be reported here, as well as any challenges to making progress. It should be a place where we celebrate the successes of the plan. Uh, next slide, please. This landing page will be your resources page. So many resources are already available on the city's website, including the, the maintenance schedule and the per tree permits. This uh, section will allow links to get quickly to the things that you might be looking for, including many of the policies that were discussed tonight that have yet to be developed. So this will be the clearinghouse for all of this information. Uh, Treekeeper Canopy is um, what you see illustrated here as an important tool that comes with your plan. And it will allow you to develop planting plans that address very specific uh, goals and priorities. So um, if we have a chance tonight, we might demo that real quick. I know it's not on the schedule, but what you can do is you can choose if, if heat islands is your priority, if um, disadvantaged communities are your priority, if areas with lower canopy are your priority, you can select one or multiple priorities. And it will help you determine the best place in town based on census tracts that you should plant trees to address those priorities. And this is a very dynamic tool. It can be used by anybody and you can adjust the priorities on the fly. You can also um, use this tool to uh, determine the number of trees you need to increase or you need to increase canopy. If you're going to have a goal to increase canopy by 5%, you can plug in the um, representative trees. So maybe you want to plant 20% of the trees that you plant would be small trees and you and you adjust the canopy cover for that, which we would ideally think might be around 20, 20 foot canopy for a small tree, uh, but you can adjust all that. And then you can define what a medium tree is and also what a large tree is and how much of the percentage of planted trees those statures will make up. 
And based on that, you can determine the number of trees you need to reach your canopy goal and also determine the benefits um, that will increase as a result of those tree plantings over time. So it's a really cool tool. I think you're gonna really like it a lot. Um, Sure. So I think that is all I wanted to talk about on this page. Um, we can move to the next page, the next slide. So the next slide is the vision. This is your implementation plan. And again, when I don't know if it might be called, um, but we're in 2022 right now, maybe 40 years from now, it's 62. So it could be vision 2060 or something like that. Um, it might not be this name, but that, this is the part of the plan that will include the implementation schedule. So uh, it will include focus areas, likely, that kind of organize your goals under specific big picture vision, and also the goals um, and the objectives that support those goals, along with action strategies supporting each objective and target dates and resources needed. So those will be estimated based on whether more staff is needed, um, sort of a range of the amount of funding that you could expect to, to spend on each of those objectives so that you'll be able to organize and prioritize and even change the priorities over time and focus on those things that are most important to you today. And it'll also allow folks in the community to uh, um, advocate for what they think is most important in the plan. One thing I noticed in the previous plan is that things are numbered. Um, we tend not to recommend numbering things because priorities change over time. So we'll um, have we will recommend that the goals not be numbered so that you can adjust uh, your priorities and over time based on your resources and by, based on changing needs in the community and opportunities that arise over a 40 year period. Um, here, I want to take a moment again to acknowledge our third place photo contest winner. Congratulations, Jonathan Serna. Uh, I, I also want to assure you, based on what we heard today, that uh, previous goals and vision are to be incorporated into this. Um, we've currently, we just recently received feedback from the city council on their position of the goals in the previous plan. Um, and we're looking forward to receiving the consolidated feedback when we're finished tonight. Um, we have a long and hopefully uh, comprehensive list of recommendations uh, that we've already developed based on everything we've heard throughout this process. These will be translated into the goals, objectives, and action strategies. Um, and it's really important for us that we organize these elements so that the relationships as well as how they complement and support the common themes and concerns is clear, which is why you haven't seen that from us yet. We're, uh, we're looking forward to your feedback from this evening. And I think at that point, we will have all of the feedback we're hoping to gather at this point. I also know that we have a public review period coming up after the holidays and in the early part of next year. So we may receive more re feedback at that point. Um, I, would, I would assume that we would. Um, our initial recommendations will take all of this into consideration on all of the information and comments that we've heard throughout this process. And we will present these recommendations and then work collaboratively with staff and the community to ensure that the plan reflects the vision and the priorities of your community. Um, what we're trying to do right now is we're trying to do the heavy lifting for you. Uh, we would like to, to go through all of this. Like you said, there's probably a lot of a comment that we've heard and a lot of information is, is very similar. So reading through that and making sure that we address everything and making sure that we do resolve anything that is inconsistent in direction. Um, some of that may be obvious and other things will have to come back to you and to the city team for direction. But in the end, um, we'll make sure that those policies and goals and objectives match your vision. And I just want to say again that the format of the plan will allow the city to provide updates as progress is made. So nothing is set in stone with this plan. Again, it's not going to sit on Charlie's shelf and become stale. Um, next slide, please. Uh, finally, um, just summarizing, 
you know, what's in the urban forest management plan. There'll be benchmarks of the current tree canopy, the city resource and the operations. There'll be documents and uh, uh, outlining the current challenges in 2020 that were, um, that were here when this plan is developed. Uh, we're presenting the goals and actions to address those challenges and opportunities moving forward. Um, it should serve as a guiding document that sets the direction of the urban forestry program and results in policies and procedures and ordinance revisions. It will remain a living document that can be updated to show progress and adjustments to priorities. It's also important to note that it does connect so much information. I know you haven't had a chance to absorb everything that's been developed during this process, and some of it you haven't even had a chance to play with properly. But this, all of the elements in this project are going to allow you to look at data in a multifaceted way that you haven't been able to before. You will be able to explore canopy data in conjunction with all of the other GIS information you have uh, about uh, demographics and other socioeconomic issues. Um, the uh, urban forest management plan will allow you to connect and access those policy documents that could be lost otherwise that exist and that are, um, are still, and those that are still being developed, including those that were illustrated tonight under the framework of tree planting efforts. It's just important really that you understand that the urban forest management is a beginning in this conversation and not the end. Um, thank you for that. And uh, last slide, we're gonna, it's just a, really a transitional slide. I'm gonna ask Adrian to shut down the presentation and I'm going to share the story map with you so that we can uh, take a look at that. Okay. Wait just a minute. Should we have a question and answer period at all right here, Adrian, Charlie? Or should we just jump into the story map? Um, I, I think probably continuing with the story map and then question. Okay. There we go. Oops. Got some things overlapping my view. So let me rearrange things. Can you see the story map? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Well, we can see a web page, uh, gisdavy.com. Davis story map. Davis story map, correct. Okay, so um, this provides an introduction. And again, we intend for this to uh, serve as the executive summary of the plan. So it basically summarizes what we know is in the plan so far. Um, obviously, a lot of all of it is subject to change, uh, but it demonstrates where we're at in the planning process at the moment. It allows you to explore that. It explains a little bit of background of how we got here and what we did to get here. And then it heads into the benefits of trees. Um, so this is a little preview of um, on your website, we intend to have an illustration a cityscape that allows you to explore the different benefits of a tree in a dynamic fashion. Um, this illustration represents that. Um, it's sort of a placeholder at the moment. So as you scroll down on the left, you learn, start to learn a little bit more about the urban forest. And you can explore this um, on your own. And this, uh, by the way, this is, I think it's on the website already um, today. Adrian, can you confirm that? Sorry, she has stepped away for just a moment. Yeah, no worries. We can confirm that in a little bit. Um, I know we were working really hard to get it here for you today. So you have to be very careful not to move too quickly in here or things jump around. It's a lot easier to use it on your own and uh, you're not uh, facing a lag over the internet as well. So you can basically scroll in at any level. Right here, we're looking at the map of the land cover. So the dark green is where trees exist. The brown is bare soils. This lighter tan color is impervious surfaces. And the light green is represents low-lying vegetation and turf. There's also likely water in here. So anything that's um, a blue color, there's not a whole lot of open water um, in the community. So it's a, it's 
kind of hard to spot, but it was calculated. So you can explore that however you want to. You can zoom around the city. You can look for vacant sites and, and areas that are open and possibly could support additional tree planting. Um, the benefits from the tree canopy are outlined here. So um, we, we can understand that uh, carbon sequestered on an annual basis is about almost 50% of your benefits that are quantifiable. Um, you know, it's very important to understand that most of the benefits from trees are not quantifiable at this time. Uh, we know that trees are very beneficial, but because um, you know, there's not a lot of research that allows us to assign a dollar value to that, it's impossible to quantify most of those at this time. Um, we can explore land cover. Um, and canopy by land cover, land canopy uh, by public and private land. And again, you can zoom in and out. Um, about 74% of the tree canopy in Davis is on private land. So it's very important to understand that from a preservation standpoint and also from a management standpoint. Um, you can explore canopy cover by census tract and see which census tracts have the greatest amount of canopy cover um, versus those that have less. Let's see if I can get the lane cover one to pop up. I'm not sure. Some of them take a while to load because there's a great deal of information. So this is also, uh, besides census tracts, you can explore at the census block group level, also at the neighborhood level. And you can explore the parks. Yeah, so here is the heat island map. Again, I apologize, it takes a while to load and it's probably even more of a lag on your side. So um, I look forward to you having access to these tools and being able to explore them your, yourself and ask questions, uh, follow up questions as we move through this process. Um, you can see that there's a really hot area over here on the north uh, west side. And you can see some various other warm spots. And you can also see the areas that are cooler. And um, you can likely attribute that to higher canopy. So again, um, you can plan to plant more trees to address these type of things. And here's the zoning breakdown over here. I wasn't able to pull up that map, but you can see that uh, mixed use areas have the highest canopy cover. Um, residential areas are next at 34%. And then the lowest canopy is found in public and semi-public uh, zoned districts. So it's a quick way to kind of get through all of the data that's been collected for this, for this uh, project. We can look at canopy cover and rights of way. Uh, we can see that the red rights of way have the least canopy and the darker green has the greatest canopy. So you can explore streets where you may want to focus tree planting to increase shade on those streets and increase canopy. All of this information was looked at and, and uh, come explored and analyzed uh, in conjunction with Cal Enviro screen data. So Cal Enviro screen data, data identifies a lot of uh, socioeconomic challenges and allows us to explore that at the census tract level. It also identifies areas that are disadvantaged uh, for various reasons and or more susceptible to pollution and also um, at the same time climate change. Um, and once, if you wanna dive in deeper than uh, tree canopy, you can also explore the city trees. Let me see why are those not. So we can turn on all the city tree sites and zoom in and see where city trees are. Um, see what kind of information. We can also pull up the common name, the botanical name, and the size of the trees. Now, as acknowledged um, by all, many people, and again this evening, this is the 2018 tree data, so it's, it's outdated. And we're hoping that that is something that's done early in the process. Once the plan is developed is to collect a complete tree inventory. And I know the city shares those goals as well. Um, 
at this time, this is the best information we have. So this is what's in here. When the new information is collected, this can all be updated so that you'll be seeing the new information. Um, if you wanna look for vacant planting sites, which these haven't been verified, but this is based on the inventory data. They still all need to be verified whether they're actually sites and whether they're appropriate for tree planting. But um, it's hard to see it unless I zoom out. And they, so you can see that these light gray boxes represent potential vacant sites throughout the community. The environmental benefits from city trees, again, the ones that we can quantify are included on here. So this is city trees only, uh, sequestering carbon, avoided runoff from stormwater, and also pollution removal from the air to improve air quality. Um, don't think the landmark trees are added on here yet, but there's going to be a way to identify the landmark trees in the community. From there, um, you know, we'll be talking about what the goals are. Um, they'll be added on here once the goals objectives are finalized for the plan. They will be summarized on here like any other executive summary so that people will be able to quickly see that while they're exploring the map. What are the goals objectives for the plan? Um, they'll be more detailed in the actual plan itself. A lot of acknowledgements on here. Everyone who helped put this plan together. It's, it's, it's a great tool. There's a lot of information and I, I didn't really get into the nitty gritty of all of it um, because I'm not too sure what exactly you would like to see, but I'm happy to illustrate other things as we move into the question and answer period. I'll stop sharing. And uh, thank you for letting me talk. Wow, Tina, thank you so much. Really interesting uh, uh, presentation. A lot's there, a lot there to digest. So I think what we'd like to do is um, uh, op open up for any clarifying questions, and then we'll take public comment, and then we'll have some discussion and maybe some more questions and uh, su any suggestions that we have too. So with that. Um, uh, are there commissioners and liaisons with clarifying questions? I see Jim and Cheryl. So very impressive uh, collection of data, but uh, in five years, it'll become obsolete. What kinds of plans are there for maintaining and updating the data and how, uh, how, how available are these data? What, what would be the difficulty of, of maintaining the, uh, the data file? Yeah, great question. And I heard some discussion on this earlier, um, and I'm glad to get a chance to answer your question. So as far as the canopy data itself, like the overall canopy, that requires, um, it, it, it can be done a few ways. The way it was initially done for this project, it was actually mapped. So we know where canopy exists and where it doesn't exist. Um, Treekeeper, which is an open source software developed with the National Forest Service, um, has a tool called Tree Keeper Canopy, and you could set up a methodology that gives a sample that uses sample points to calculate your land cover values. It doesn't map it again. So, but you can determine, and it's quite accurate as long as you collect enough points. Um, takes a few hours, maybe a whole day. Um, you can calculate changes in land cover percent. So you could calculate whether your canopy had increased or reduced. What it doesn't do is it doesn't map. So if that is a more economical way of checking the pulse of your overall canopy. Um, uh, we would recommend that every five to 10 years, you do a new canopy land cover assessment so that you can actually see the details of where canopy has changed. As far as updating the information about the benefits from your inventory, as long as the inventory data is maintained um, as current, so the DBH of trees, the diameter of the trees is, is updated as trees are maintained, as long as we know the species, the condition, and the current DBH of the trees, then that information is literally available at the push of a button uh, with the right setup. So um, that's that's correct. That comment that was made earlier. 
Are there any other questions about that? Did that make sense? Uh, John, then Larry. Uh, did Cheryl, Cheryl had her hand up before me, I think. Cheryl seems to have lowered her hand. Cheryl. I lowered my hand. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank um, you, John. Okay. So a, a few points. Um, uh, can, can you just go over what you were just saying as, as far as, and I know I'm not going to get this right, but the, the, uh, the, um, the, the, um, uh, the LIDAR data or what, whatever that was. Okay. Does that have to be, um, does that have to be updated on a, or what, what basis, what time frame should that data be, be updated on? That's a great question, John. And there's no exact uh, rule about how often it should be updated. Some of that uh, is probably based on what you know about the community. If you feel like canopy has been lost, like just let's just say you had a catastrophic storm. Uh, I hope that never happens but it's happened in other communities where a, a storm has come through and taken down a lot of trees. And so you might want to assess change at that point. Under normal conditions, um, you know, you may not need to reassess canopy uh, more than every five years or even up to 10 years if you don't think changes are happening. If you have the sense that changes are happening, whether that's tree growth through a bunch of new tree plantings or it's tree loss due to some catastrophic incident like a storm or like a particular pest, then you might want to do it more regularly. Okay, it seems it seems to me just a, a comment on that is, um, you know, if new trees are growing and they're putting on biomass and old trees are putting on even more, more biomass, it seems like a, to redo that so you have a more up-to-date idea of what's going on and where things have worked, um, trees have taken hold, et cetera, at, it sounds like every five to 10 years would be, uh, uh, you know, re regardless of weather events or anything else. Um, do you have um, an idea about how much that, that costs to do that uh, data co collection? Um, I can look it up what it costs for this process, but I, I don't have that right in front of me, John. Okay. Okay. So let me ask you a couple of other things, if I could. Uh, <laughs> Do you have in mind, have you and Charlie discussed um, the desirability of putting any specific numeric standards, like the goal is to have a 20% a canopy coverage, or the goal is to have, you know, 80% uh, uh, canopy coverage over, over roads? Um, I, I, I appreciate and I really like that your, your, uh, your, your modeling and your data analysis allows you to tell what what that number is or the current number is but any um any thoughts on on saying this is what we think it should be in the plan or where do you think that type of uh target or goal is uh, is best put another good question so definitely the we intend that the plan have canopy goals um we're just receiving the I think, I think again tonight is we're gonna be receiving or soon soon now the final comments on what the, how you feel about the goals in the previous plan. So that's kind of our final piece that we need to weave in. Um, we're here, this, you are the final stakeholder, I, I believe in this preliminary process that will give us your opinion on whether the goals in the, in the previous plan are still desirable. So we will take that information along with all of the information we've gathered. We'll look at that. There's some suggestions for what canopy goals should be in there. So we're waiting for all of that information. We'll consolidate it into uh, so that we don't have duplicates. And then we'll start discussing more precise goals and how we're going to address those okay. uh, recommendations. Uh, I'm going to ask you um, if when you're considering these numeric goals, uh, if you could try to also uh, consider them for 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 other uh, other things just besides uh, other canopy goals besides just the, the total canopy, you know how much of a canopy uh, would we would could we have for uh, uh, for bike bike paths and roads and based on your maps what what's a realistic number? 
maybe the infrastructure is such that you can't get 80% coverage in certain areas if that's what you want. Um, so if, if, if you could think about that, just if you can uh, have the resolution come, come down to maybe some, some more specific areas, you know, down, downtown, for example, you know, I know this is going to be part of a bigger thing, but it would be nice if we could say, hey, you know, if everything grew and you used every site, what's the, what's the, the, the possibility for percent coverage down, downtown? So if you can, and we do talk about potential. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. You. Yeah, no, no, no. Go ahead. Yes, yeah. The, the you know the potential because you know it's like uh, you know I mean you want to have a a target. It's just not an aspirational target. You want to have a target that 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 has some some meaning in in implementation. Okay. Um, so what I get from your your presentation, which again I I agree. I, I think it was really good. I think a lot of my sleepless nights would have been, uh, so to speak, would have been resolved if I would have seen this in, from the beginning. Um, um, so, so uh, for example, will now you might not do this in, in the plan, but the data and the tools, will they be available, say, if Charlie wants to say, how much of a canopy cover uh, is there for bike paths in uh, East Davis, and he defines the area. Will you, will your will your um, framework be able to, to 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 allow him to ask that question? Absolutely, and that is something I didn't touch on. But as a result of the canopy and land cover analysis, the city has a whole bunch of new GIS layers, so that they can examine canopy at virtually any any level from the overall to the parcel level. So any boundary that's identified, you could look at canopy, you can explore where the potential sites might be within that boundary. Uh, it's vir virtually limitless at how you can explore that. Okay, uh, two more quick things. Um, could, could you go back to the slide where you have the, uh, I think it's the very first slide with the the boxes going up and down and-, and uh, The site map. It's one of the first ones. Um, where you lay out the different sections of the report. Adrian, are you able to page back? Or Just give us one moment. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that, that's it. So I think this is one thing that's, that's always on my mind too, is, uh, is we have, you're, you're familiar with the uh, slide, I think Charlie may have developed it with the, the plan and then there's the, the ordinance and then there's the, the specific gu guidelines. You're, you're familiar with that, that diagram, mm -hmm. right? The okay. one you showed earlier, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is it possible, would you think it would be worthwhile to have another section of this web-based uh, uh, presentation to the public where those things are sort of tied together in words. You know, this is what this is supposed to be doing. This, this will answer these types of questions. This thing will answer those types of questions. You know, just so people could put all the, it's somewhere where, you know, you guys as consultants knowing the whole thing, <laughs> Yeah, now you know each part of it, and just sort of weave together how all those things combine to come up with a uh, with what I'm calling a uh, a ye, an overall ye management plan. You know, so if there could be a section, you know, maybe it's in the resource. I don't know if it's in the resources. It it doesn't seem to really want to go there. Perhaps uh, it could be on the policy and regulation. But if we could sort of parse parse that out you know so someone could look at it and say okay this is where this is covered this is where you know that's covered this is where that's covered and just give a, a summary and a little linkage to how these things fit together i think for the public that that would be really nice because i think there's for people who who want to know i think there's confusion as to how all these pieces fit together uh just one last thing um 
I think it's 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 hitting me. Maybe I'm embarrassed to say I'm coming late to the party here, but it really does. And could you give, tell me what you think of this? It does really appear that what this plan is, it's more of tools for planning rather than a plan itself. Would you agree with that? Um, I think it's both. I okay. think the plan that you're looking for will be found on the urban forest revision place, uh, page. It's called that at the moment. And that will have the plan very much like you uh, like you see it in the existing plan from mm -hmm. 2000, is it 2008, sorry. Um, but that, it will look very much similar to that where your goals will have objectives that support the goals. Um, and it could be policies. These names are subject to change. Um, yeah. I per personally prefer objective to policy because I think a policy document is actually something that's finished. Um, that communicates policy. Um, so I prefer the term objective, but again, it's your plan. So um, this would be the area that would have the action steps that we are recommending that, that in, in the end, when this is finalized for the project, again, it's never going to be finalized, but when it's delivered for this project, that area in the urban forestry vision is going to reflect the community. It won't say Davey recommends, it will oh, no, reflect no, no. the no, vision. No, no, but yeah, yeah, the but I, I, the community. I'm I'm sorry to interrupt you. Your your um my your 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 face disappeared from my screen. Sorry. Um, I um, I guess what I'm trying to to say and ask it's it's a you're not telling us what to do. Of course, uh, you wouldn't as a consultant. Um, but you're not telling us how to achieve the vision and the goals. You're giving us the tools so that we can be informed, technically informed to achieve those? I think the answer to that is both. Okay, okay, okay. And I think it might become a more apparent as, as you see um, a draft plan in its re release okay. for, for public review. Okay, great, yeah, and, and hey, can, really, can, can, congratulations. This was a nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Larry? So this is, um, this is awesome. This is what computers were actually promised to do for us. And so when I was talking about real-time assessments, uh, that, this is exactly what I was thinking. And a specific question on that is, um, obviously the computer and the, and the web page need data. So, uh, so getting that back to that data, and so you said there were kind of two methods for updating the situation. One was like a um, a site sampling using, I think you said that was the that was the open software from the Forest Service. Wow, Treekeeper Canopy is the name. Treekeeper, um, yeah. I'm, I'm I, sorry, not Treekeeper Canopy. I'm sorry, I Tree Canopy. I, tree. I, I approve. I tree that. I approve my tax dollars for that use. So like, um, what am I trying to ask? So I guess, is there a database software that will, um, automatically update the size of a tree? So if you have a, whatever, a Texas red oak that is, one dbh will the data set update automatically and then you know then you can go back every whenever you visit the tree and actually measure it you could insert that to correct but are there databases that do that um we can definitely i mean it's possible to program that in the more assumptions you make the less accurate your projections are but we i mean there is definitely ways to program that in uh, without going, you know, I don't, I don't want to, we have a tool, Tree Keeper Canopy, that does that. Okay. Um, awesome. the tree, tree Keeper itself um, is hooked to the National Benefits Calculator, and uh, which is also being updated in by iTree, the open source doc, um, software. And so you could tie your inventory, you're not currently using um, 
tree keeper, but it, any other, like it's possible to do it is all I'm trying to say. Yes, it is possible yeah. to do that. I, I don't need to know how to do it. Charlie needs to know how to do it, <laughs> but as long as it's possible. So that's that's actually awesome. And, and yeah, to keep in mind that only applies to the inventory trees now, though. So and uh, the inventory sure. trees are only providing about twenty six percent of your overall canopy at the moment. So it doesn't it doesn't give you the you can't actively update that for your overall canopy because you don't have enough individual tree data. Right. Okay. And that, that was actually one of the one of the take home numbers from this is 74% of the urban canopy is on private land. Like wow that's that's three quarters. I mean uh, that's a lot. And then um so this is actually and I think I I will uh step in the circle with John and say this this relieves a lot of anxiety. Um, it actually relieves a lot of anxiety about doing the goals and vision last, which like, isn't that supposed to drive the process? <laughs> but but if it's web-based, that's easy to update, that's easy to change. And and I think, so from, from a management perspective, from Charlie's perspective, basically, I think, right, you list your priorities, I've got this data, um, and so I know where to go, I know where to put, my resources, I know what, right, what gets a priority. It was an interesting map also with the with the uh, transit map because it was like almost inverted from what, inverted is probably not the right word, but anyway, um, that the major transit corridors were kind of the least treed. That's not a huge surprise, I guess, because roads don't have trees in them usually, although I've got a plan for Old East Davis, so. Uh, stand by to stand by. Anyway, um, yeah, that's it. And anyway, just a great presentation, and I and I'm really looking forward to that website and getting this whole thing because that it. People talk about living documents, but that this is actually seems like it could be a living document. That's all. I'll stop blathering. Sorry. So we're uh, still doing uh, clarifying questions, and then we'll do more discussion after we take public comment. So uh, Jim, then Anne. Yeah, this is a, a, a terrific tool for showing what exists now. And I'm wondering if it can be used for planning purposes, where if you put in uh, projections of uh, if we do this, that, and the other thing, what would the city look like? Uh, can it be used for, for that sort of uh, uh, projective uh, planning purpose? The tool that we haven't yet demo, Tree Keeper Canopy, can be used for that purpose. You can um, select a goal to explore, a canopy goal to explore. Um, you can ex accept the, uh, select that by census tract or neighborhood or whatever, and you can calculate the number of trees that would be needed to be planted to increase to that goal and also the increase in benefits over time as those trees grow. Thank you. And? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify, is the story map functional now or if not, do you have a projected time? I defer to Adrian for that question. Uh, yeah, so it is, um, we will be getting it up as soon as possible. I have a technical issue that I am uh, currently resolving. Um, as soon it is, as it is up, um, I will be sending an email out to um, the commission and to uh, the liaisons, um, folks that have uh, indicated that they would like to receive information about um, this plan. We have a number of folks that have provided their email address. Um, also, the folks that participated as collaborators, uh, we have an email with that as well. Um, so we will uh, send that information out to folks um, and get the word out that we have this fantastic uh, summary of all of our information available for folks. Um, and then as we're awaiting the, the plan itself. Well, that's great. I look forward to messing around with it. So thank you very much. Jim, I think you still have your hand up from before. Is that, do you have a, do you have a question? Are there other questions? I, I have a couple questions. Um, 
so looking at the document that uh, the resource plan, uh, the executive summary, the I was curious about the community, the definition of community trees. Um, this does the does community trees include like the backyard trees? Does it include the seventy four percent of the trees in public or uh, in private lands? Can you tell me a little more about that? You're speaking about the resource analysis summary report. Yes. Yeah. So we we uh, may have referred to public trees as community trees in there. Um, I'm not sure we were clear on the preferred definition at that time that that report came out, but it refers to public trees only, the inventory trees. So when you say public trees, does that in, what what it, what's included in public trees? Street trees, park trees, trees at city facilities, trees that are currently in the city's inventory that the city um, is responsible for. So, but that doesn't include like school district trees or uh, UC Davis facilities that are within the city limits? I don't believe they're in the city's inventory. So um, Charlie can correct me if I'm wrong, but so, I don't believe that. Yeah, it's just city trees that are inventoried for the purposes of city maintenance expectations. Um, so those, those that you just mentioned would not be included. Okay, so the so then the number the thirty thousand six hundred ninety two trees, that's just the inventoried city trees. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no within the resource uh, analysis that there's not really any distinction for uh, school district or UC Davis or any other public agencies that might be operating? Is that? Not in the resource analysis. It is very specific to the inventory city trees. Oh, okay, cool. Um, let's see. Oh, I was wondering um, if you can direct us to um, a example that Davey has done of a completed story map for another city. So we might be able to look at like what the final product looks like. Um, so uh, we, we definitely have story maps. I think our most recent one is for the city of Yuba City. Um, but keep in mind, theirs is not an online plan. So theirs is a, um, a traditional printed plan. There is a link to their plan in there, but the plan is a PDF, so it's not interactive like your plan will be. So is there an interactive one that you've done that we might look at? You guys are breaking ground here. Uh, we thought this was a perfect opportunity to allow Davis to really shine and show uh, what progression in urban forestry management really means. Um, we want uh, we felt that was really important for your community because you guys are so engaged and we wanted this plan to be accessible and we wanted it to be a living document and we didn't want it to be something that it becomes stagnant, stagnant on a shelf. And so we proposed this, the city um, embraced it and uh, we're really excited about it. I mean, this is our opportunity to, our opportunity also to unveil something that uh, I've envisioned for quite a while and I'm really happy to see where it's headed. That's really cool. Can you, have you experienced uh, any unexpected challenges with that? And like, how is, how is that going to take on this new process? Yeah, I think the thing for me is like, I don't understand the technology. Like I know what websites look like. I know the potential, but like, I don't understand how things get from A to B, which is really hard for me because I'm a planner. Yeah. So, <laughs> so so, so say I don't understand something and ask someone else the questions and, and actually uh, patiently watch and trust the process is, is not right. um, my normal seat. Um, but yeah, I think that's the biggest thing is we don't, um, you know, we, we don't understand the technology yet. But you know what, 15 years ago when I started doing this, I didn't understand a lot about GIS. And um, we learned that very quickly and we learned how to apply it and we learned how to grow from there. So I don't I, I don't Absolutely. think this is gonna be a long drawn out process. 
Yeah. So are the people who are doing the programming end of it, are they internal to Davy? Or, no, they are uh, not. We hired a sub consultant who is very, uh, uh, has a lot of experience in developing uh, websites and applications. Okay. But have they done a, something like this before for, I guess if no other city has ever done this, no one's ever, they've never done that either. So no, they've done uh, yeah. some amazing websites, uh, but nothing there. As far as we're aware, there is no uh, urban forest management plan or master plan like what we are building here. There are sites that have semi interaction, you know, where you can click on links and go to different places in a PDF or go to external sites, but um, nothing that is completely a website. Can, with this can, I, can I ask who the consultants are? I... Um, I'm okay saying that as long as Adrian doesn't think there's a problem. No, of course not. Our consultant is Mind K. Say again. One word, mind K, M I N D K. Cool. Uh, awesome. Thank you for that. Um, let's see. Oh, you commented that the lowest canopy cover is in public and semi public areas. Can you tell me a little more what you mean by that and what, what those land, what that, what's included in that? I'm not I sure. Oh, go ahead, Rachel. Jump in. Yeah, I can hop in here if you'd like. So there's an, I think it's a train station close to downtown. That was one. And then there's a church. So it's it's not very much land within the community, but it is public, semi-public, I guess. Is the, the zone it's kind of both. Yeah. Right. So public doesn't necessarily mean like owned by the city because the Amtrak yeah. station, for example, is not owned by the city. Right. Uh, Correct. It, and I think so they're open to the public um, sometimes, but not all the time. And the city is not the, the owner. So like the school district and UC facilities would fall into that category? I, I believe that they fall into a different okay. category. I think they're institutional. Mm. Sorry to interject, but I think maybe we'll... the PG&E facility might also fall into this category, which is a big gravel lot and probably skews this pretty heavily um, <laughs> because it is treeless. That would make sense. Uh, well, I noticed like uh, in the heat map that the um, the uh, AstroTurf field on the at the football the football field at the high school is one of the terrible heat spots, uh, which I guess it's AstroTurf. So, um, but that's not in this category. Um, I, oh, can, I can yeah. show that map now if you want to see it. I've got it open. On sure, I actually have a question about other stuff in that program. If you if you want to pull that up, that would be cool. I just have a couple more questions. That interactive heat map is really helpful to know. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah. So, so we you can really... see where those semi public, the public semi public districts are in these dark purple. There's just a little, a few spots. I oh, can so zoom in more. But I also did want to block you from seeing the overall. Right. So the one, so that looks like it's maybe Harper Junior High out there. At the top uh, right corner, the uh, northeast corner. Over here? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not familiar enough to say what's there. Right. But those areas have an average of 7% canopy cover. Um, that is Harper, and most of it is um, just bare land. Yeah. Interesting. Um, well, this will be fascinating to look at more. The This fits in well with the, one of the questions I had. You mentioned that we're going to be able to look at canopy coverage um, with like socioeconomic demographics. How does how does that work? Um, 
is it okay if I switch to Tree Keeper Canopy for a second and demo that real quick? Awesome, that'd be great. Okay, let me stop screen sharing and I'll change maps. Cool, thank you so much for the thorough presentation and all your great answers to all these questions. I'm excited to share this with you and I'm also happy to hear that we're alleviating a lot of your concerns because definitely don't want you to be stressed out. <laughs> All right, so now you're seeing the Tree Keeper Canopy tool. Um, and this has a lot of different applications to it as well, but I'm going to take you to the prioritization page. So this is a, allows us to look at either census blocks or census tracks. So census tracks are bigger, census block groups are smaller. So I tend to, to grow there. And you can see over on this side over here on the left side that I can select priorities. If I select everything to none, then nothing's prioritized. Um, I felt you might be most interested in temperature. So earlier I selected surface temperature. So this is the areas where things are hotter. I'm going to add in uh, poverty population and um, tree equity scores. So this will be like where you have less canopy, also um, where there's more populations that are un, uh, within the poverty and also where temperatures are hot. So again, you can select low or high priority for any or all of the priorities that are available on here. You have options for tree canopy. So areas of low canopy, um, these question marks identify what these definitions mean. In the case of tree canopy, areas of low tree canopy are given the highest priority. Uh, potential canopy areas with higher potential are giving a higher priority. Uh, population density, stormwater runoff, surface temperatures, air quality, uh, slopes, um, median incomes, minority populations, populations under 18, um, no high school education, populations, poverty, um, and all of this data comes from Cal Virus screen, so it's very much up to date, um, and also the tree equity score, which indicates areas, um, let me pull up the definition, a lower tree equity score indicates a greater priority for closing the tree canopy gap. So I don't mean to zoom in, as soon as I touch my wheel, it just it definitely makes a big adjustment. So I apologize for that. So once you select your priorities, you can see the darker the color represents the area with the highest priority. And it's like, I think this is number one. Yeah, so this ends up being the highest priority with these particular priorities selected as all high. And, and this shows you that the reason this particular census uh, block group was selected is because it has a high population of uh, folks that are um, experiencing poverty. Um, a less important risk factor here was surface temperature. In this case, if you go to another, you'll see different um, metrics were involved in that priority. So in this case, all three factors that we selected had an impact on the score, and this is ranked the second priority. So if you want to use trees to address these particular priorities, you would focus on those census block groups that have the that are identified as the highest priority. And you can change these multiple times on the fly. So another thing that's really cool here, I'm gonna jump into really quick because we've talked about this. So you're probably um, primed to understand this now is we can select here the type of trees we want to plant in the future. Um, in this case, we're saying that 20% of the trees we want to plant will be small stature, 20% 20, 20 will be large stature, and 60% will be medium stature. We can adjust that so we can plant more large trees. Um, and then if you come up here and, and say by um, you want to increase the percent of tree canopy over time, you set that. And then you come down here and you define the size of the tree crowns. So there's a whole lot of interactivity here. Um, in Davis, we're just guessing that a small tree crown is probably around 20 feet in diameter. You can change that. 
to whatever you think is more meaningful, whether that's 18 or 25. So you choose how to uh, set these measurements. Again, for a medium crown, I set it at 35 just for discussion purposes. Large tree crowns are set at 50%. Um, you can adjust for tree canopy stability. If you think you're losing a lot of trees, then you definitely wanna program that into the equation. Um, you can also set mortality rates for your new trees. So if, if trees planted uh, tend to have a 1% or 2% mortality rate, you can program that in. Um, and then you set the number of trees, a number of years that you want to plant the trees over. So let's say five, um, and then um, you can pull it up and the number of trees to plant based on what I put in here was around 7,000 trees. Um, it will increase your canopy from 26% to 27%. Uh, then, and it includes the acres of new canopy. And over time, how the benefits would change. Uh, I'm not doing something in here because the benefits aren't changing. And I know I worked this out the other day. Sorry. Okay. This is a really cool tool. Um, who, who will this be available to? Everyone. So it'll be part of the, the story package? Yes. It will link to your plan in the, in the main homepage of the plan. Awesome. I'm really glad we got a chance to see this. Um, I had a question about the the uh, right right of ways map that you showed us. Um, okay. The what right of ways are being considered? Is it roads, bike paths? What's um all of the right of ways? Um, I can definitely go back to the story map, which has that. But I mean, it's important to understand that all of the right of ways that are identified in the city's GIS layers are identified there we can look at any of them. Okay, so that, I, I just wanna make sure that includes like green belt and bike, well, I guess there's two parts. I wanna make sure that that includes like all the green belts and bike paths, um, because those are really important, to, in my opinion, to shade. Um, so it would help us to know, to be able to, I mean, it's a, such a great tool that you're presenting us. So I'm getting excited, like, how do we use this to know like what bike paths need more shade, right? So I'm just want, trying to probe to make sure that it's doing what I think it's doing. And that's a great question. So even I'm not, I'm going to pull up Tree Keeper Canopy again. I mean, cool. yes, uh, the story map again, because yeah. Um, yeah. I know that's what you're referring to, but yeah. I just want to yeah. reassure you that this is, this may not be all, this is not all of the information that is available to the city. The city uh -huh. has a, a comprehensive map now of these five classifications of land cover. So tree canopy, impervious surfaces, um, low, um, low lying vegetation, bare soils and water. Mm -hmm. And the city can use that map to explore virtually anything if there is an ex if there's an existing boundary right now and we looked at it during this process it is likely available on the story map if there is not an existing boundary let's just say maybe every trail doesn't have a center line yet it might not be in the story map so there's nothing to stop the city from zooming in on that area and exploring the canopy cover within a boundary that they generate so if it doesn't currently exist it can be generated if it's not currently on the story map, it could be on. Okay. Well, I guess that's where I'm going is that, you know, my opinion is that the the um, the transportation routes for active transportation are the highest priority for shading. So being able to easily identify that those are not, that which ones are not being shaded currently, like that stretch of path right there, for example, that you just showed. Um, yeah. Uh, the, you know, go. that would be really, that would be really helpful. And then I'm going to throw another one in there for you. Um, does this include uh, public transportation like bus stops? I'm not sure if we look specifically at that, but again, anything can be explored with the data that has been generated. Would it be, I mean, I think that adding bus stops to this would be really helpful. 
because there again, we, we want to encourage, you know, from my opinion, we want to encourage people taking public transportation. So we, we would want, um, you know, bus stops to be as pleasant to wait in in hot summer days as possible. Uh, and trees is one way to address that. So if, if it were possible to add bus stops into this, I think it would so, make it more useful too. Uh, thank you, Colin. And, and yeah. really quickly, um, bus stops are actually not an asset the city always maintains. Um, a number of them are maintained by uh, either Yolo, um, Yolo Bus or uh, the university through Unitrans. Um, but we can certainly, you know, work and see if we can get that information to include in our GIS, um, you know, for the purposes of having this type of analysis done. Um, but it would take a little bit of time. It's it's not information that we would immediately have offhand because it's not an asset that we maintain. Okay. Uh, I, the oh, I had just one last question, which is. Um, the when you showed us the tree sites what determined what what constitutes a vacant site is it just is it just straight up from inventory or um rachel you can clarify if i'm incorrect but it's in the inventory data as a, a tree site right now but those are we know those are outdated um all of the new trees that may not have been recorded, there might be trees in some of those sites. Those sites might be not available for some other reason. Um, they really need to be updated. That's the most current data that we have. So that's what we're displaying right now. Charlie, feel free to jump in. Yeah, so when the inventory was done in 2018, um, potential sites was not one of the caveats to be collected. Um, and so for the most part, the vacants are trees removed that had not been replanted yet. Um, one of the big components of the new inventory would be figuring out exactly what is considered a vacant site for collection uh, and an updated inventory, which is something I worked on in Baltimore. Um, so it's definitely doable. We'll just have to figure out how to put those parameters in place uh, specific to Davis. Cool. Uh, so I know I had a lot of questions. Thank you so much for your patience and ask them all. Hopefully they were uh, interesting to everybody else uh, as well. Um, so we're, I think we're we're trying we're still in the clarifying question. So if there others have some a couple of questions, um, I see John's hand, and then we'll take public comment and any last discussion or uh, input and comments. John. Yeah. Uh, just just two clarifying questions. Um, <clears throat> Like as you were saying, uh, seventy-five percent of the trees are are private. They're not they're not included uh, in these all these calculations. Uh, have you ever uh, done this type of work for uh, a city and 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 you did include the the private trees? Is that something that you've done in the past? Um, we have, and it's never been a complete inventory. Um, I tree eco, which is how we got the benefits for your um, city trees, your public trees is also can also be used uh, using site uh, sampling. So random sites are gener generated through the program and um, you can go out and collect on private property and you could do a full inventory, but that's as far as I know, that's never been done of private trees, but uh, you can use sample plot data to extrapolate the conditions, including species dis diversity, condition, uh, a lot of information about the overall urban forest on private land. So is, is that, could I just get your recommendation or your opinion on it? Um, given the fact that only 25%, this only covers 25%, is, is that an avenue, at least for these test plots, if you will, is that an avenue that we should be, uh, be, be, be thinking about? To get a better idea of the the value and and the look and you know the structure of the of the entire entire urban forest. If that's the type of information you are looking for, then definitely that's an avenue you should pursue. But for a, I guess it's it's a, it's a theoretical question. I guess it is 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 that have you found or in your opinion, it, it would clearly give you a better feel for your urban forest, uh, but since a city can't manage it, would, would it be worth the money? Or are the 
impediments to to implementing anything too 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 strong that you wouldn't want to invest that kind of money. Charlie, I think you want to say something here. So the Forest Service, um, and I'm blanking on the name of the team that you may know, uh, does plot data for woods throughout the country. Um, it's not you for, is it? No, I can't think of it's what it is. FIA, Charlie. FIA, FIA. I think yes, it's FIA. thank you. So they do this to get a, bit, a sampling of the entire country's worth of forest area. Um, and they have started just four or five years ago sampling that technique more detailed in urban areas. Baltimore was one of them. And I want to say Phoenix was the other, but I'm not positive. Um, so they're still figuring out exactly if how much is needed in terms of sampling size um, and the variation of land use coverage and things like that. So it's a possibility in the future, but I would not invest money into it until we see what the Forest Service provides in their urban uh, sampling. Okay, so uh, so all those trees, just uh, again, this is really clarifying. All those trees that we see on these maps uh, that you got from uh, LIDAR or whatever technique, um, remote imaging, did they include private trees, right? Because the LIDAR aerial imaging is, is seeing those trees, correct? That's correct. We we did not use LIDAR. We used high resolution aerial okay. imaging. Okay. Just to be just to be clear. Um, and yes, the canopy land cover analysis includes all trees. All the trees. Okay. Um, one other thing, then, and just a piece of advice. We had we've been talking about um, uh, looking at the evaluating the carbon sequestration capacity. Okay. If we're only looking at 25% of the trees, is that going to be a, a number that helps? Uh, is it just a, yes, a third because part? We are only looking at the, the number, those that number of trees when we're talking about the, the city's tree, re, the public tree resource. Right. But when we're looking at the overall canopy, benefits are tied to canopy. So the more tree canopy you have, the more leaf area you have, the higher your benefit. So when we looked at the overall canopy, the initial benefits reported on the story map, sorry, I'm trying to scroll up and I am hit my wheel again. These um, initial benefits right here in the canopy cover section where we're talking about land cover, these apply to the overall urban forest. Okay, so, so, will, we, so will we know the, which apply to just what conclusions or what parts of the, um, the um, the, the maps that you put out that you could change. Um, are we just changing statistics or parameters for the um, uh, for the city trees in, in those? You know, you showed that if you planted so many more trees or or this or that, uh, this is what it would look like. Are, do, th do those uh, routines in that program, do they, um, do they only consider the, the city trees? So the answer to that is no. Um, and the way the story map, which we're looking at now, so we, we, we looked at two tools tonight. One is the story map, and this is the story map, and it talks about canopy first. So that's public and private resource. And then as you scroll down in the story map, it dials in on the public tree resource, on the city trees. Okay. Um, so you can differentiate those here. When you go into the tree keeper canopy tool and start planning, for, um, oops, there we go. Um, when you go into the tree keeper canopy tool and start uh, hypothetically planning planting projects, it isn't considering whether those trees will be public or private. It's just considering how many trees you need to increase canopy overall within a boundary, whether that's the overall boundary or whether it's in a specific uh, census block group or census tract or neighborhood. Um, okay. So is that going to be? Your question? Yeah, is is that going to be pretty clear in the uh, in the discussion of the of the the map pages and stuff? What what you know? If you're looking at something, is it including everything? Is it including some things? Uh, will, will that be pretty clear to the user? Um, that's our goal is to make that all very clear. So okay. um, you know, as you guys are reviewing, if something needs more explanation or needs more widgets to yeah. like provide definitions or something, like we can take all of that into consideration and and uh, make adjustments. Okay, cool. Uh, thanks, Tina. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are there any other clarifying questions before we take public comment? Okay, let's take public comment. We do have one public comment, just one moment. Alan Hirsch, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and share your comment. Hmm. Alan, I'm sorry, we can't hear you. I think you need to unmute yourself. I do see a raised hand there, but I'm not hearing him and he has to initiate the unmute. So I'm, I'm wondering if maybe he's stepped away. I, I believe he did indicate that he was going to step away um, in an earlier public comment this evening. Um, I'll, I'll tell you There's what. There's no additional public commenters at this time. Okay. Uh, so coming back to the uh, commission then um, for uh, discussion um, or any input that folks have uh, for uh, Tina and Rachel. Does anyone uh, have anything they'd like to add? Elaine and then Larry. Uh, Elaine, I think you're on mute. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, this is very slick, um, very impressive. But bo bottom line is we're just getting an outline of what's going to be on there. So at this point, I don't feel like I can make a comment as to what I really think, because it, it's just a, it's a bare bones outline at the moment. Is that am I wrong or? Um, I, you're correct. It's an outline. Um, we just wanted to show you the direction the plan was going in and give you an overview on what will be in each section. Um, it is, we are within a couple of weeks of delivering an initial draft, which will be fairly rough because there'll be things that we need to clarify as far as what our understanding of certain things are. Um, and then the second draft should be fairly polished. And I anticipate that's the one um, that will be shared back, but um, that Adrian or Charlie, feel free to jump in. I, I think to, to Elaine's point, yes, this is a, a pre-draft update. We're talking through um, some of the technology and some of the um, uh, data connection points that will be available um, to our community and to the commission um, in navigating you know, this plan and this process moving forward. Um, but we will have that draft for review um, and for comments uh, coming up. So stay tuned. Okay, that sounds good. Um, the other question I had is, it's not quite clear to me, and and obviously more details are coming, so I I get it. Um, but things like the tree ordinance, will that be included in this? So no, um, there there may be some recommendations uh, given. Um, you know, I, I you know number of the comments around enforcement, for example, which would be um, supported by the ordinance. And to John's point. You know, having some information to indicate you know, kind of where stuff sits um, in the city's toolkit uh, for approaching urban forestry. Um, that is going to be an, our next effort. Um, and using uh, you know the goals and the vision and the process that we've developed, um, or we are developing and have will be developed through the urban forest management plan process, revisiting the ordinance and looking at where we need to focus our efforts um, and uh, you know update and revise as necessary. So it's it's the next step. It's not a part of this plan. Okay, so. Um... <laughs> 
am I right in assuming that this is basically a web page on the city's website? Is is that correct? So it will be um, a, a, a few web pages uh, connected with the city's website. It'll be integrated within the existing site, um, but it will you know, have quite a lot of information as um, Tina went through earlier today, you know, connections, data points, links, inventories um, for folks to be able to navigate um, the information that we have about our urban forest now and our urban forest moving forward. Okay. The reason I'm concerned is I know the public, <laughs> the public has trouble oftentimes navigating city websites or county websites. The county, sure. the county just went through a huge uh, overhaul of its website because it was so bad. So sure. I, I would encourage, highly encourage the city to be careful about how this is done so that it's easy for the average citizen to navigate you know, where they need to go to get the information. I think that's an excellent point. And, you know, we've been working on our website as a city uh, for a little while. If, you know, some of the folks who've been here for a while might recall previous iterations of our site that were certainly much more data heavy and uh, text heavy um, than we currently have. But a really good point, Elaine, and something that we will um, definitely be considering in our navigation to this information for sure. Okay, very good. I think this is a, uh, I'm really ha happy about the direction this is taking, and I'm looking forward to the uh, completed project. Larry, then John, and then Cheryl. Yeah, so this is, I mean, it's super exciting, and I've been involved in city stuff long enough that I'm always cautiously optimistic, but I mean, this is, uh, in addition to you know, being a model for other cities, this is a model for the city of Davis. I mean, a web page like this for the urban forest is awesome, but a web page or system of web pages for, um, for all the departments would would be great. And the thing about the GIS is you can add any data set at any time. So I was just thinking when you were clicking on that, okay, I want to make this a priority. I want to make a heat island a priority. Where are the hot spots? I want to make um, underserved communities, you know, economically, the, the low economic neighborhoods, I want to make those a priority. And then I want to make, you know, tree canopy or lack thereof a, a priority. Like I can see Charlie, like, okay, we just got a shipment of 40 trees right? He goes to the map and he goes, click it, he click, click, click. And he's like, okay, we're going to plant here, here, and here, right? Like it, this, this is, this is really, this is really good. Anyway, so I think it's, I think it could also be a model for other sites in Davis. And, and Adrian, I think that the city webpage has it's gotten better as someone who's used it for seven or eight years, pretty intensively. Um, the great thing about seven or eight years ago, there was kind of nowhere to go, but up. So <laughs> Point taken. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> and, and and comma and it is going up. It is getting better. It it's it is improving. And this is this is the kind of thing I think <clears throat> the community can use. This is this is what transparency is all about. Um, and community interaction engagement. That's kind of it. I'm just really excited. I'm 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 actually kind of gushing, and I would almost say that if all we got out of this whole process is this web page, I'd be happy. <laughs> okay, uh, John, then Cheryl. Yeah, just to, to, to summarize uh, and agree with Larry, I, I've used a lot of uh, models to help guide uh, management and implementation in the environment. And, and this, this, is, this is really nice. Okay, this is really nice. Uh, educating the community is very important. I do think if this is, if we're the first ones and you guys are doing this for the first time and we're the first city, uh, you should brush off your uh, your, your ro ro Rolodex, if you will, um, for any reporters in the New York Times or the Washington Post or whatever, because I think what I've seen on the web, there's so much focus now on trees and climate change 
uh, uh, management plans that I think this has legs way beyond. And I think there's a lot of, of journalists who would really like to, to hear this story. It's a really, it's a feel good story. It's taking technology and science, putting it together, trying to deal with climate change and these, and these real world issues. And I think this story ye, ye, writes itself, you know, so I would not be, uh, you know, it gives you guys a lot of press and it would give, give Davis a lot of press, a lot of well-deserved press because we, we, we commonly are on the edge of, of a lot of good things. So anyway, just, just a suggestion. Cheryl. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to uh, bring your attention to page 27 on the plan. I could, um, you could either pull it up or I could just share my screen and, and uh, show that. That'd be okay. Is this, do you mean from the uh, resource? Uh, this is from item 7B from, right, right. the resources page, right. Great. Uh, Adrian or you, or Chelsea, are you able to pull that that up? Or I could just share my screen because I have it up. Yeah, that would be fine with me if that's okay with staff. Sure. Can you see that? So this is table four on uh, page twenty seven of that item, and it lists the species that may be underused based on RPI and age distribution. And um, I think this is really helpful, you know, one of many tables in here, of course, that are looking at, uh, at issues. What, what I noticed was that there was a very invasive species listed on this table, Acacia melanoxylon. And um, it just uh, reminded me of how important it is to make sure that we are not giving people the impression that um, we would like more acacia melanoxylon, um, you know, a tree listed in the California invasive species list uh, to be included in here. So um, that's certainly, there are quite a few trees like that. There's also Triadica sibifera, is uh, another one that's in the Cal IPC list that we shouldn't plant here anymore. So I just wanted to check with the uh, consultant to see how you're dealing with the invasive species trees. I mean, obviously it's a resource, so uh, resource inventory, um, but do we have a way of identifying the invasive species so that we can remove those and replant those? I can um, jump in here. That is my mistake. Um, the invasive species are listed in the species diversity section. And that one I must have accidentally put on this list as I was crunching data as to which species were performing well. Um, but typically we would not put that there. That was a mistake on my part. And we can definitely modify the resource analysis and re-upload re so that that is not part of the underused species. But again, this list is not a like cure-all. It's just we looked at relative performance index and age distribution, and these species compared to others in the inventory did quite well. Um, other species that aren't well represented in the inventory may do just as well. And as you mentioned, might potentially become invasive once we learn more about them. So that is one thing about the invasive species. They do typically perform quite well. <laughs> exactly. Um, exactly. That's yeah. why it's, it's so important. You know, I don't know <laughs> if you'd want to have a you know, an asterisk or some kind of footnote on every invasive species that's described in here so that it's pretty clear yes. to everybody that those that are is... not trees that we're going to want to replant and maybe we want to actually take some action based on the fact that we have these invasive species planted in our area. So that, that is actually a component of our 
Arva R project where our partner, other partner Helix is going to be um, making some comments on the existing tree list and on the existing inventory of tree species that they recommend considering to add to that list and also remove for, for the same reasons you just said. For either they're not climate resilient, we don't expect them to perform well in the future, and or they may be invasive. So we will be and we'll be reviewing that list. Rachel will be weighing in on that list as well um, before it's finalized. Now we realize that there's other um, groups within the city that are also developing tree lists. So we're not developing um, a matrix or a full tree list uh, with metrics for each species. We're just giving initial recommendations for what we think should be considered. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. John? Yeah, this might be something for down the road, uh, but getting to that point uh, that Cheryl is making, as far as um, uh, say uh, climate ready trees are concerned. Um, I'm assuming that your program has the ability to um, to to add different species, right? And so if all of a sudden we started planting these climate ready trees, even though they don't exist now, I think a lot of the tables and what you're presenting are based on what's there now, but. Are you going to be able to uh, factor in and accommodate what, what's going to happen if we add this whole different new uh, palette of, of, of trees? Yeah, um, I mean, one of the challenges, obvious, is, is we don't know. We didn't know what we didn't know 10 years ago, and we don't know what we're going to know in another 10 years. So um, we base our decisions today on what we know today, what we've learned from the past. The tree uh, list that results uh, from this project, well, the tree list is not going to result from this project. We are only going to provide some initial recommendations for trees we think should be considered for either addition or removal from the city's list. And Charlie can probably expand on this better than I can, but there's other groups within the city right now that are developing uh, your tree yeah, list. Okay. And sure. I would we, assume yeah. that it would be, it would be ab adapted to be changed as we learn more. So I guess I guess I'm I'm just simply asking it, 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 the um, your model can 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 add new trees to it and if you put in the different characteristics of Charlie will and the staff will be able to add new trees put in those specifics about those trees like like you did so it so it it, it can work if we put a, a new palette of climate ready trees in there yes yeah okay good. Larry, just um, another uh, thing that that you did, Tina, on there was looked at. I guess you could, you know, figure out the percentage. So if we, if there are one hundred twenty thousand trees in Davis, we talked about um, one of your earlier presentations. You said like we have twenty six or twenty seven percent canopy coverage, which I, I that's got to be really good, but. Um, but we have a potential for 40 something, 46%. So 120,000 trees, 1% 1 is 1,200 trees. So we just did a really aggressive, the city and Tree Davis just did a really aggressive tree planning. Um, we planted 1,000 trees and it turned out over four years. Last year, we, we approved the removal of over 300. So we planned 300. We, lost 300 so that was an aggressive year and we were even so improving the tree canopy is something that i obviously as a tree commissioner am in favor of but it's a long-term goal and um i mean i think this the plan and the and the just the the site itself is uh and i love that the plan is the site i i yeah um but it but that's how you do it is you measure and you get metrics and you say how you're doing and you look at trees. And I love the comment that, yeah, the invasive species are doing really well. <laughs> They're invasive. Um, the zebra mussels kicking butt and taking names. So anyway, um, but just to just to give people some perspective, that's it's a lot of trees. But, you know, you you get there by planting trees and not cutting others down. 
that's it. Awesome. Well, I have a couple comments that I'll I'll add. Um, the uh, good points about the invasive species, and I guess I would love to see a table like that be from the recommended list that's being developed. Uh, but th that's an aside. I have a couple other comments. I guess to kind of summarize, there's sort of four phrases that I, I would say are set the priorities for me for what you know I'm thinking about when it comes to these tr to, to trees. Um, it's uh, cl and and they overlap. It's it's climate, uh, meaning both adaptation and action. Uh, the environment, which I mean more, you know, stormwater and other impacts of trees, heat island effect could could be wrapped in there too, even though that's also climate. Um, the social impact, being able to shade places where people need shade, uh, and the habitat value. And we haven't talked a lot about habitat value uh, tonight. But the, we can't, you know, it's not something to be underestimated. I mean, this canopy that we have here is it has an incredible habitat value, and so I, I know that it's in the it's a, it's considered in the resource report. We just I just wanted to know that we hadn't really talked about it, um, and I'm I'm not sure how that will fit onto the um, onto the map, uh, but I would like to I would like to make sure that we that people are aware of the habitat value too. Um, so one thing, looking at the, uh, the land use map, when we were talking about the semi-public issues, I, it struck me that some of the data might be funny there, uh, like that, the, that um, you had said that schools weren't semi-public, but then a school was clearly in the semi-public area. And I, just looking at it at a glance, it, some of it looked uh, maybe um, like it wasn't quite what it what it was reporting to be so i would encourage like re reevaluating the data in there um i'd be happy to help being familiar with davis maybe there's others who who can uh but you know that might be worth worth looking at um boy i was so struck by the idea that 74 percent of the canopy cover is on private land um, and so it's one of the things that I've really been thinking about since uh, starting to look at the tree ordinance and looking at other cities tree ordinances is that other cities have protections for uh, have broader protections for trees. And it seems like some of those cities, it might be because they were in originally forested areas uh, that, you know, so there's protections so that the area doesn't lose its original forestation. Um, but I wonder about what we can do to better protect um, this 74% 74, 74 of the canopy that's on private land. And any insight that Davey, that, that Tina, that you can bring and that Davey can bring to, um, uh, to help us wrestle with that would be really helpful and appreciated. Um, Cheryl mentioned earlier tonight about um, young native oaks, for example. I think maybe there's other native trees that might be worthy of, of considering in that as well. Um, I know some cities have uh, ordinances that protect trees over a certain size. And I know we're not to the point of writing the ordinance yet, but to the extent you have any ideas that can, that can be flushed out in the management plan that will help us with that. Um, I think it's something that we're going to be wrestling with next year, and and so that that could be really useful to us. Uh, but we talked a little bit about the bike paths and bus and bus stops. I mean, so when we talk about climate, like trees, you know, we there's a lot of good data that you presented us tonight on how trees are good for the environment and good for climate. But by shading certain areas like bike paths and bus stops, I believe that trees can have a multiplier effect where they're not just shading, uh, they're not just the benefit of the tree, but they're encouraging actions that move people to less uh, carbon uh, emitting transportation methods. And in our city, um, you know, 75% of our greenhouse gas emissions in the city are from transportation. And so for us to do anything about climate, we have to adjust the way we travel and uh, since I probably because I'm on the tree commission, I started focusing on wow, can we plant trees to help make get to help people travel in other ways and make it more appealing 
um, to have people travel in other ways. So that whatever you can do to help us understand how we can plant trees that will help people um, make better use of, of public transportation and um, active transportation, that'll be, I think that would be really, really helpful. And, you know, the, you know, I'm able, I'm saying this because the, what you've put before us tonight is, is, you know, has so many great fact, factors to it and so much potential um, that, you know, boy, if, if we can use that potential to help uh, encourage active transportation or figure out how we can plant trees to encourage active transportation, amazing. And then I'm so, I'm really excited about this and I'm really curious uh, what the next steps are. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is, we, this is an incredible resource assessment and I'm wondering if there's input that you want from us tonight on the planning part, like the, of the management plan, or if, there, if you have questions for us or any, anything that you want to hear from us about planning too. And that's the end of my long-windedness. Yeah, the, the main thing we're looking forward to tonight is your comments on the previous goals and policies so that we can make sure that we're using that information and your point of view to make sure that we are considering uh, what goals and, and policies to forward in this plan. Awesome. Larry, I see you have your hand up. Yeah, actually, so, um, and this is for Adrian or any other staff member, do, does the city of Davis currently have a dedicated GIS person on staff? So uh, we, we did, we have a position. Um, that position is currently vacant. Uh, it is in a department that is not public works, utilities, and operations, so I can't speak to details, um, but the capacity exists. We also have a um, public works engineering and transportation staff person um, that assists uh, hugely in GIS efforts um, related to our um, public works operations. Um, so we have we have the capacity in house, um, but we're hoping that we will have an additional uh, dedicated GIS staff person in our IS department soon. Awesome, because I was going to say that this obviously this is super cool, but it's, you know, it's all about implementation. And so if they if the consultants walk away and leave us with this gorgeous thing and then we don't have anybody that can keep it going and keep it updated, then it doesn't help much in the long run. Um, and so I was just going to say, if we don't have that capacity, that it would be, um, it might be something the commission thinks about and making a recommendation to make that capacity, but it sounds like the capacity is already there. Yeah, I would say, Larry, I, I completely agree. Um, I, and I think, you know, in, in conversations, we said exactly the same thing. Uh, it's, it's only as good as us being able to use it. Um, in the long term, for sure, because we are, um, you know, this is this is our plan. This is what we want um, folks to engage with moving forward. So we are working very closely with the consultants uh, to make sure that what we have is something that um, the city can maintain um, it to the level that that we want to. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Uh, well. I'm not seeing any other hands. Is there any last uh, commentary, input, thank yous, et cetera, for uh, Tina and Rachel and the Davy, the Davy group? I'm not seeing I anybody. Say, oh, thank you for Tina and Rachel for uh, sticking with us and, and for that fantastic presentation. We really appreciate your time today. Yeah, we thank appreciate you. the opportunity. Thank you. Great. Yeah, thank you so much. And I'm sorry to keep you till 935 on a Thursday night, uh, your dedication shows, and uh, I'm really excited about the work you're doing and the fact, you know, the 2000, from what I understand, the 2002 Urban Forest Management Plan was groundbreaking in one of the first cities to do it. And so it's great that, that uh, you are, that we're able to team with you to do another groundbreaking step for urban forestry management plans. So thank you so much for all your time and sticking with us tonight. And I can't wait to see the, the next iteration. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. okay.
All right, so we are moving along to our last item of the evening commission and staff communications. Um, I'm not sure if we have subcommittee updates that folks would like to provide. Larry? Just a qu really quick update. So um, John Ruder and I were are on this subcommittee for uh, urban wood reclamation, basically. Um, and I showed a picture at the beginning of uh, about actual uh, about that actual thing, um, taking a, a tree that was dying and turning it into something usable um, as opposed to just a pile of wood chips. Um, and I did want to say that if anybody needs that service, I have the phone number of the person that did a great job. Um, and that the sticking point, the, the wall we hit was actually with um, uh, the city's contractor. Is that Davey Tree? No, that's uh, West Coast Arbors. West um, Coast, they, yeah. And they do that. They have a yard and stuff, but they uh, it, it didn't either their district supervisor didn't want to talk about it or was didn't understand the way I was presenting and it's probably the latter um, as far as switching from them taking reclaimable lumber um, and having it go and, and basically releasing it to the city so that we could do it but anyway um, we haven't met in a long time that's the other update that's it Okay. Any you other? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, if there weren't anything, we could move to the long range. But if there's any other updates, I'm not seeing any other hands. So let's look at the long range. Okay. Um, so we've got a, a bunch of things um, on here and, and lots of lofty goals and we know and um, we've been shifting as as we can to make sure we're spending the time we need to spend. Um, like we've talked about a couple times those ordinance updates are coming back. Um, we do have our chair and vice chair election uh, scheduled for January. Um, we also have the review of the master's tree list that might get pushed um, based on some of the conversations that are having with the larger group. And then um, just to remind everybody for all of our subcommittees, we do have an annual check-in. Um, we wanna make sure that we're revisiting the subcommittee, the, the scope, um, the folks involved, um, so that if we want to make any adjustments or changes or you know, folks would want to join or leave that subcommittee, we would have the ability to do so. So we've got our revisiting of the um, disposition subcommittee um, for next, for January. Uh, and then we would look at revisiting some of our other subcommittees later on next year. Um, at this point, most of what we're looking at is going to be the urban forest management plan and the ordinance updates. Um, obviously, this is you know dynamic as we move forward. I did see that Anne had her hand up for a moment. I just wanted to check what is the process for finding out about committees and getting assigned to a committee or volunteering? So I can talk to you later about that or how would you like well, to move forward? Sure. So if if there are subcommittees that you're interested in, um, certainly reaching out to the folks who are on the subcommittees to kind of get an idea as to, you know, where they're at and what they've been working on is great. Um, we would need to meet and adjust the um, the folks involved. So either we could wait until we have that revisiting of the subcommittee. Um, a lot of them are going to come up towards the beginning of this year, this next year. Um, or we can agendize that for a meeting to be able to make that adjustment um, where that is desired. Whatever works for the group, that's fine. I just wanted to express my interest, that's all. Sure, fantastic. That's. I think that's fantastic, really. Then I would say, like, from my experience, a lot of the heavy lifting has been done in the subcommittees. Uh, so uh, having people, having you ready and wanting to do that is good news. Yeah. John? Um, in in January, could you just, um, when it says revisit, uh, uh, I guess, disposition or deposition of tree material after removal subcommittee, is there a, is, is there a subcommittee? Is that, is that part of the whole issue about whether uh, 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 leaf products and branches should be put into the bike lanes or could you just tell me what that subcommittee 
So the subcommittee that's being referenced here on this chart is the one that um, that Larry just gave a, an update on. It's well, looking on at you know what happens with the city's trees after they're removed. Um, the subcommittee that you're on, yes. <laughs> um, we do not have a subcommittee um, around on street yard material pile collection. Um, and that is something that if there's if there's interest in in talking about that, um, we could agendize that for a future meeting. Yeah, if you could uh, agendize that, because it seems to be uh, an issue that's getting a lot of comment. So that, that would be great if you could do that or think about that. The other thing, too, is the um, the urban forest management plan draft, <coughs> draft final in February. Um, does that mean that we're going to receive that draft before the meeting and discuss it? Should we be prepared to discuss it at that meeting, or are we just going to, you know, what what what's that whole procedure about that? that so you know, we're is a great question. Um, you know, we're still kind of working through um, when everything is going to um, you know be available, and and we're going through that process. Um, so you know, obviously the the ultimate goal is is as much time as possible for that review. Um, so we will be. Providing that plan um, in its in its sort of final stages for the commission to review first, um, and then we would incorporate any comments and take it to the council for their uh, review and any suggested modifications, and then ultimately potential adoption. In saying that, if if it's necessary to have additional meetings um, to review that draft, that is certainly something that the commission can discuss to make sure that there is uh, ample uh, time to be able to um, look at what we will be providing. So this, so my understanding is that the final report has to be approved by the city council or uh, in March, or the final Correct. report is due in March, or which Correct. which one is it? the council has to approve it. So correct, the the council has to approve the plan by March twenty fifth. So since we meet once a month, you know, and if we're going to, I'm just concerned about the timing, and and how much time compression there is. If we're getting a draft final in February, but it all has to be over the next month and the council has to vote on it, I'm just wondering how, you know, can we receive the the um, the draft in, in sections or, you know, it just seems that there's very little time for us to look at it and really make any substantive comments that could then go back and maybe get, get incorporated. Uh, if we're gonna get it in February, and, and it's due to the council by, by March. Sure, no, I definitely understand that. And I would underscore again that, that our goal is to have as much time um, as we can within our time frame um, to be able to have that plan review, both for this commission and for the public um, and for you know, all of our um, collaborators that have been so generous with their time on this project. So um, it could be that we're able to, to shift that to January. It could be that there are additional meetings um, that we might be able to put on the calendar for folks to be able to review the information. Um, I believe that we will have a much better idea about what we are um, proposing to do in January. January. Um, and so at that point, we'll be able to, um, you know, outline what we might think would be uh, the best opportunity for the commission. Um, and then obviously, that's entirely up for discussion and, uh, you know, review by, by you all. Okay. Thanks. Larry? Yeah, I was actually gonna, uh, that's why I had my hand up was to, I think we need to put the leaf litter or the, the street loosen the street, we need to agendize that and talk about it. I mean, I understand people's um, issues with the bike lanes and stuff, um, but it it's part of a, it's part of a canopy, it's part of a tree. And if we want to increase the tree canopy, then we're gonna increase the debris that trees get. Like, you know, you just take the logical steps and so basically the city just said, well, we're just not gonna do the claw anymore or at least as often as we used to, but that doesn't change how much stuff falls out of the tree. Um, so anyway, I just think we need to talk about that. I think uh, March might be a time to start that. I'd like 
I kind of, I, I think we've got enough big meaty things to focus on and with the March deadline. Um, anyway, that's it. So uh, I would say, I think the, the winds are blowing and the leaves are falling into the same piles in the street because uh, I was gonna suggest that we uh, agendize that as well. I understand that the um, Bicycle Transportation Street Safety Commission uh, is taking that issue up again and there's a renewed push to end all street pickup. So um, I was gonna, I, I guess I'm thinking along the lines of a, of a, a subcommittee maybe appointing a subcommittee in January and then we could take it up at a later meeting. So let's, and then I guess, so let's, uh, so I would suggest we do that in, for January. And, and the other question I have is February, we're meeting, or February's our first meeting in person again, is that? I would have to go back and look at the um, message. Um, yeah, I understood March. March. Yeah, yeah March. it's. Okay. I believe it is March. Um, so that that is another uh, discussion um, that we will be having. the The main piece of it being that the building that we used for our meetings prior um, is no longer a public building in the same way um, in the hours that it is open. Um, plus, there are some challenges with the. Um, the access of the building in terms of their stairs uh, and other things. So we've had some some looked at some options of, of what we, where we might be able to consider um, having the meetings when we come back to being in person. Um, and we would uh, talk about those with the commission as well. So um, one thing from my perspective too, is it's important that we're able to continue to record the meetings. So, um, I know that this isn't exactly the right spot for it, but um, record and broadcasting the meetings is a, an important part of public access. Um, I understand it helps the staff a lot too to have the recording. Well, I, I will say that that's not up to us. Um, no. That would be a council um, action. So um, for that particular suggestion, uh, we can certainly pass it along, but uh, that would not be our decision. Okay, well, in that case, let's agendize in January. Um, an item about uh, continued recordings so that we can, uh, as a as a group, express um, a desire to continue to record and broadcast the meetings, if others agree. Larry? Um, I would agree with that. I would say that, too, if people um, are thinking they might want to be on a subcommittee that talks about loose in the street, that they might want to check out the agendas for the Bicycle Transportation and Street Safety Commission so that they can be present when they discuss it. Um, we it. also have quite a lot of information about the Yard Material Pile Collection Program on our City Solid Waste web pages under, I believe it is on Street Yard Material Pile Collection. Um, but I can certainly share that information with anyone who is interested, including the revision to the schedule that we had in 2019. Okay, any other uh, items for the long range calendar? Things unaddressed, invasive species that need to invade the calendar? <laughs> no, okay. Uh, I think we have one more item on the agenda. It, it's a very important one. <laughs> Larry Gunther moves to adjourn. A second. Okay. Uh, starting from the top, uh, Anne. Yes. <laughs> and Daniel. Great. Uh, Larry Gunther. Aye. Alan Lowry. Yes. John Ruder. Aye. And Colin Walsh. Aye. And so we are adjourned. I hope you had a good Aye. first meeting, Anne. Yeah, yeah, thanks. This was a great meeting. Could be my first. I certainly got it. Trial by fire. So thank you. Yeah. Very much. <laughs> this, this is Lots of information. Thank you.